What's happening, weirdos? This is May Martin, one of the most wonderful, delightful, engaging chats I've had in a while. They are talented, uh, delightful, uh, insightful. We already discussed we have to do another one because there was so much more to discuss. But you'll see this; these two hours flew by. Uh, I had something I had to do afterwards, I believe. Otherwise, I think this would have been a three- or four-hour chat. Uh, it was just so much fun talking with May. If you'd like to see more of them, check out uh, SAP. It's going to be out on March 28th. May Martin SAP will be their uh, stand-up special, which will be on Netflix. If you'd like to see something right now, their incredible series Feel Good is currently on Netflix. We talk about that a little bit in this episode. But um, any chance you get, I, I think in May, so May for May Martin, uh, at my Largo show, if you're going to be in the Los Angeles area, we're trying to get them to be on the show. I, I don't know if that's confirmed, but a nice way to work in a plug for my monthly Largo show. If you're going to be in the LA area, it's always so fun. If you want to come see me do stand-up, go to Largo-LA.com for tickets to that. Or if you're not in the California, Los Angeles area, go to PeteHolmes.com. I'm currently on tour. Thank you to everybody that came out to San Diego. It was so fun. Uh, coming up next is New Orleans, Dallas, Houston, Milwaukee, Madison, Royal Oak, Michigan, Minneapolis, New York, New York, and Ridgefield, Connecticut. These shows are going to be awesome. They have been awesome. And as always, tickets will be uh, always and forever on PeteHolmes.com. If you like this show, the best thing you can do to show some support, we don't have a Patreon or anything like that, is just try one of these Pete's Picks. Why, why do I call the ads the Pete's Picks? Because they're things I actually use and actually love, like the perfect jean. I am obsessed with my perfect jeans. In fact, it's gotten to the point where they're the only pants I wear because they're incredibly comfortable, but they're also incredibly stylish. I've worn them to premieres. I've worn them around the house. I've fallen asleep with them because they're that comfortable. They're almost PJ, com I'm gonna say they are PJ comfortable, but they look incredible. The fit and the cut and the build of these jeans is awesome, but there's a little stretchy secret to them. <laughs> stretchy secret. 2% spandex, 2.5% rayon for extra comfort and movement that your man parts require. I just flew here. I'm, I'm recording this intro in Toronto. I always, always, always fly in my perfect jeans. I always perform in my perfect jeans. I always do everything in my perfect jeans because when do I not want to be comfortable? When do I not want to look good and be comfortable? They're so soft, you might even forget you're wearing pants, and I haven't had to replace a single pair yet. I've been wearing them for years, meaning they are incredibly durable, made with super, super high quality uh, so sewing techniques, and the materials themselves are very, very high quality. They're my favorite pants. Everybody wears pants. You want to show some support, support of the show? Show yourself some support. Get some perfect jeans. The perfect jean for the perfectly imperfect men. Just 60 bucks when you use code WEIRDO at checkout. Liberate your lower limbs with the one and only perfect jean. Go to theperfectjean.nyc. That's theperfectjean.nyc. And use code WEIRDO at checkout for 25% off. No fooling. You ever see me on TV or on stage or anywhere wearing jeans, it's the perfect gene. I absolutely love them. Give them a try and show your support of the show. Also, uh, last little Pete's pick here. This is my Apollo Neuro, the product that has probably changed my life for the better the most in the past few years. We've given away so many of these as gifts. Uh, and we absolutely swear by them as a family, both Val and I love our Apollo Neuro. Uh, for those of you who aren't watching the video, I'm pointing to this little device on the inside of my wrist. It looks like a watch. It's not a watch. It is a wearable piece of tech that helps your body recover from stress. Basically, it is a wearable 
hug for your nervous system that uses touch therapy to help you feel safe and in control. What does that mean? It basically, right now it's on uh, clear and focused, which is one of my favorite settings. It's using an almost sub-perceptual vibration to speak to my nervous system in a language of touch that it can understand to help me focus as I'm working. I'm doing a little work here. I'm doing these intros here. So I want to be in a clear and focused state. So that is the setting. There's so many settings, but it's like finding the fuse box to your nervous system that Apollo can help with. It can help you relax, can help you sleep, can help you focus and be more productive. Worn on the wrist or the ankle, Val wears hers on her ankle. Apollo Neuro delivers gentle, soothing vibrations that train your nervous system to recover and rebalance after stress. It is not a woo-woo or new age thing. It is developed by a board certified psychiatrist and a neuroscientist, both of whom have been studying the impacts of chronic stress in humans for nearly 15 years. And the more you use it, the better it works. This is a chemical, meaning it's not caffeine, a uh, free way of getting your energy up. I often use it when I'm driving. If I ever start feeling a little dozy when I'm driving, I just hit the buttons on my neuro, hit the energy setting, and it perks me right up. Social and open, great for parties, great for the podcasts. In fact, as I'm talking with May in this episode, it's definitely on social and open. It's also a chemical free way of lulling yourself to sleep that absolutely works. Not only does it work, if I, if you're like me and you're in your 40s and you get up to pee in the middle of the night, you can rerun that program and it lulls you back to sleep, which is so, so helpful to have something to quiet your mind and ease your body back into restful sleep just by something that you're wearing. Absolutely incredible. Apollo's effects on stress, sleep, cognitive performance, and recovery have been proven in multiple clinical trials and real-world studies. So again, this is not a crystal. This is not uh, something that you'd buy in a lava lamp store. This is science, and it's so wonderful that we have it on our side to help us cope with stress. And you can get 10% off and show your support of the show by going to apolloneuro.com slash weird. That's A-P-O-L-L-O-N-E-U-R-O dot com slash weird. Show your body some support, show your nervous system some support, and show some support and love for this show. It means a lot. All right, everybody. Hope to see you out on the road. I hope to see you at Largo. Check out everything May has going on. They are incredible. You will not regret it. And in the meantime, enjoy this chat. I hope you like it as much as I did, because I friggin' friggin' I loved it. Get into it. Well, yeah, I saw that your parents were, we're just starting if that's okay. So, oh, sure. Yeah, let me see. Don't, yeah, please. You, oh, thank you for understanding the show. Yeah. <laughs> like, for real. I'm feeling very cozy today. It's, well, it's, it's been chilly and rainy, and it's like soup weather, and it's cozy weather, and it's hat weather. And I just got a hat that fits me. That hat fits you perfectly. It's my only hat that I own. I'm self so con- Like, I don't really wear it out and about. So. What do you mean? I'm not really. <laughs> no, that wasn't. I was happy to mic you. That wasn't like. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm not really a hat, like a hat person. Yeah. It works. May this I? Because you have short hair. Yeah. And you don't have an enormous head. Thanks. See, so I have longer hair, and I have an enormous head. So, what are you wearing? What kind of like a toque? I'm gonna. I'm gonna say. What you say? Oh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's, what? A toque? I, I guess that's Canadian. Yeah, toque. Like T O Q U E. Tuke like is a be- um, like a beanie. Marion Pippin, Pippin, who yeah, Pippin Tuke. <laughs> yeah, Excuse yeah. me, <laughs> I didn't know who I was talking to. Yeah. So Tuke also means it's the last name of Pippin. Yeah. Uh, from Lord of the Rings. Fool of a Tuke. All- <laughs> Fool of a Tuke. <laughs> yeah. But in Canada, everybody was like, he's calling him a hat. Yeah, well, I don't know what their reaction was to, <laughs> to Pippin. We can't project what yeah. can all of Canada reacted when Gandalf said "fool of a two." People in the movie theater, like, wait, wait, uh, wait. <laughs> Canadians oh, famously no, very easy to confuse. Yeah, They're like wait, and they stop, they shut down the movie, yeah, they have yeah, a conversation. Yeah. Wait, I don't stop. think he meant hat. <laughs> he Gandalf's wearing a pretty famous hat. Yeah, in fact, may I? Oh, sorry. I didn't mean a pun, but may I? Mother may I. Mother may I. (laughs) 
stupidest part of Lord of the Rings, the only part that doesn't age, Gandalf's hat, because it's so clearly oh, yeah. one piece of like foam. Yeah, and it's like a wizard's it's hat. It's a like silly it's, wizard's it's hat. Silly, yeah, yeah. His robe, at least it doesn't have stars and crescent moons on it, I'm gonna say. Yeah. But the hat, there are a few scenes where everything looks perfect. Yeah. I'd say this to Peter Jackson's fucking face. Would you? <laughs> no, I would not. I would say thank you for all the entertainment. But the hat doesn't look great in every shot. Yeah. That's it. I watch them every Christmas. Like Can my, I please? My whole family. Okay, a yeah. couple things we have in common. One, yeah. we're not big hat people. No. To answer your question, I somebody just sent me um, a Nike Flex Fit. What's that? Or maybe it's dry. It's, it's like an athletic, it's like a golf hat. I put it on, I was like... We found it. We found yeah, the hat. That's how I felt. This is, yeah. I got this. It's yeah. Alcatraz. Like it's from <gasps> Chicago. I not wait, Chicago. San Francisco. Wait, San Francisco. Wait, wait, yeah, wait, yeah. Wait. yeah. That would have been Chicago. hilarious. There's some guy making a killing <laughs> telling tourists that Navy Pier is Alcatraz. Yeah. <laughs> People um, don't know this. I went to San Francisco with my dad and my mom, and my dad and I went down and we did that boat trip around Alcatraz. And Cute. I, I tried this on, and did I you was go like, in? "This is it." No, I don't think you're allowed anymore. Oh, really? I want to do like a seance, and I want to. I'm into all that. You love what? What uh, is it? You love Nick Cage? You, I love like <laughs> old prisons, prisons. I guess. Is it decay in general or just prisons? Like. Because I, I like old <sighs> shutdown things. I'm yeah, drawn to like abandoned buildings. Yeah, and, like and I've never had a supernatural experience, and I'm like, I, I'm, I you want feel like to. You might. I really want to, and that's the place to go. I think. Facts, facts, facts. Yeah. Uh, I believe it was someone who was in the movie The Longest Yard, which is shot at a prison. Yeah. So they did the remake. Yeah. Um, with Adam Sandler, and apparently that prison is soups haunted. Really? And yeah, and I, and the story goes, <gasps> May Morton. This pay, this podcast is already paying out for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Because you're gonna love I got this. goosebumps already. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. It's not. It, I, I just want to give everyone a heads up. Not everybody loves ghost stories. It's not that kind of story. It's not going to trouble you. Oh, I'm, I won't be troubled. Regarding, okay, I don't yeah, think you will. But yeah. I'm worried about our. Who knows who these guys are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there could be somebody who's like literally listening to this podcast to get away from the trauma of a recent ghost story. And they're like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Right. Yeah, so yeah. Here we are like a. Or a oh. priest? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Poor priests. You know? They got to do so much and also deal with the occasional, like the phone rings, you're a priest. My, it's either a baptism or someone's or like, or an exorcism. Yeah. Vapor exer. Vapor exer. <laughs> My grandpa used to call them God botherers. God he was like, God. stop bothering God. Like, he was like, let God be like this. He didn't like, like, organize religion, I guess. So he was like. A God botherer <laughs> yeah. is so good. It reminds me of my friend Will Calhoun called actors word pretenders. That's which I really think is, good. Has a similar, both of those jokes have a similar yeah. level of condescension. Let's not forget Steve Martin and your love of that vinyl. Yeah. But I'm going to finish this oh, yeah, the and then I'm going to tell you the other thing we have in common other than our hats. Oh, great. So okay. Yeah, yeah. Be a nice flourish. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and a way of welcoming you and making yeah. you feel welcome. Um, okay, so they there was a skeptic on the crew, and they were like, they pooled the money as uh, unions and crews and actors, and everybody agrees on one thing: let's get everyone to throw in a hundred bucks. A every film and TV show, people love getting a good bet going. Yeah. So yeah. they pooled a lot of money. Yeah. And they said to this guy, if you spend the night in the <sighs> prison, locked in a cell, oh my god, you get all the money. And it was a couple grand or something. Yeah. He did it. And uh, look, I wish I was the guy. I could tell you the whole story. But yeah. the whole, all I heard was he took the money, but he wouldn't talk about it. He was so shaken by what had happened that he <sighs> refused to talk about it. To this day? I don't know. I'd love to get him on wow. the pod. I'm just kidding like that. Yeah, get him on. That would be a boring guest. He'd have one great ghost story, and then the rest of it would be like, I love gambling, uh, yeah. Adam Sandler <laughs> remakes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was scary. I want to know what happened. Me too. Yeah. I also wouldn't do it. Are you kidding me? I would do it. You I think. would do yeah. it. Yeah. But what's stopping me now? I'm like, oh, you brazen? The, the money, the, but like cash money, cash money. I think I would do it. You'd go in the, in the cell. Yeah. I don't think I'm I don't like the lock of them. I don't like the lock. Yeah. 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 Like yeah, yeah. I want that open. I do a you, lot of escape rooms. You do like escape rooms. I do them like probably every week. Well, I have good news for you. What? You're in an escape room right now. I vanish. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a little envelope with a tiny key. Yeah, oh, Good I would be Good. in You'd be heaven. Thrilled. I'd be, be in thrilled. heaven. Yeah. Are you good at them? I'd spring into action. I in believe a big you would because I'd be like, all of this is. Yeah, like deliberate. Yeah, curated. <gasps> there's a there's a pattern. There's a clue. Isn't that I'd be counting these? That's the pleasure. You just helped me realize. Yeah. 
In a world of chaos, what is this, a movie preview? In, in a, a world, world of, chaos, of chaos. In a world of chaos. Something makes sense. A, an escape room, everything makes sense. Yeah, and it's linear. You kind of, yeah. if you can figure out what to do first, like, oh, I got to open this box. And then it, and then you're like, okay, there's a yeah, key. Now I have yeah. to find that. So yeah. everything, oh, it's so soothing. When I go, I always get the sense, like I open like a, a like a tea-stained envelope. Like yeah. it's made to look old. And it always, you can tell it's been opened 3,000 times. Oh, it's That's grubby. Yeah, it's worn down. <laughs> it's worn down. So it's sort of takes me out of it yeah. that the old letter from the pirate has yeah, yeah, so yeah. clearly been re unrolled and re-rolled <laughs> yeah. so many times. Or you're like, which part of this is the button? And it's just been like worn like that too. Yeah. Well but that I becomes like, part of the escape room is like there's wear here. Yeah, but Go. then that's a valid I agree. You know, a strategy. It is a valid strategy. But I like when there's like actors in them scaring me. Like I just did one where a woman chase me with a knife like a ghost woman chase yeah, me with a knife I'm going to tell you something I yeah. don't think that was an escape room <laughs> I think you were just in a bad neighborhood I was just in Koreatown in an yeah. alleyway yeah yeah it was 3am in yeah. K-Town and got a little weird but, yeah, but we, I loved, we it. loved it she was immersed can you yeah. tell me what you mean by what you just said so <laughs> <laughs> I went it was a date actually and I went and um, aren't all dates escape rooms yes <laughs> <laughs> yes, very much. But it's good you see someone under pressure in a crisis. You see a lot about them. You Can learn I a lot. please give you the, the firmest degree? Yeah. They, there's a quote misattributed to Bill Murray. I, you just know he didn't say it. Yeah. It's like, before you marry somebody, travel with them. Right. And I think there is something valid to that. It's a little Lock sinister. Lock them in a room a with sneak, but a woman yeah. with a knife. Yeah. Well, get a woman with a knife who yeah. may or may not work there. <laughs> yeah. Put a clock on it. Because honestly, everything that I love about Val, not everything, but so many things I love about my wife would be revealed in an escape room. And now that we have a four-year-old, I see tension and I see that she diffuses it with humor. Oh, that's And with so patience, nice. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and frankly, a, a dinner is good too because if they're rude to a waiter or if they're oh, yeah. impatient or if they're intolerant of a mistake, yeah. I'm like, these are all the things... You're probably a, a wonderful technical lover. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, I'm out. Like, I can't. Technical lover. <laughs> you know, I'm sure you're an efficient. You've got skills, but you're like yeah. a, a Porsche of a lover. Yeah. Just like a German engineered lover. But I don't know. I need someone that when they bring out the wrong side, yeah, that you roll with it because oh, life is on. a whole series of mistaken yeah. sides. Yeah. And sometimes you just got to go like, you know what, mac and cheese. Worst things have happened. Yeah. <laughs> But then I'm I'm like, what do I want? Like in a situation with a woman with a knife, like, do I want to be protected? Do I want to yeah. be the protector? Not that it's one or the other, but. Um, I'm going to say I have no guess either. Yeah. It, I don't, I wouldn't like it though. So this woman chased you. <laughs> it was insane. Tell the me. The best part is you arrive and the woman working at the front desk is just this sort of really awkward kind of 21 year old with like an asymmetrical haircut just being like, <laughs> uh, well, uh, the safety is blah, blah, blah. And you know she's going to be dressed up later chasing you with a knife because you know there's. Can <laughs> I yes. please? You've got to go. Let's no, do one. But like, I just want to delight in your observation. It's like when you go to a comedy club yeah. and there's some kid ripping tickets, there's a very good chance. If it's a certain kind of club, he's going to be on stage. Yeah, later. he's going to do the middle spot. Like in the, He's yeah. going to do the middle spot and he's going to have to urgently and desperately reassess the um, the power dynamic. Yes, yeah, and earn your <laughs> and earn your respect like fast. And, and it's you, not going to work. It's like pay no attention to the like. Yes, yeah. you you saw me rip your ticket. Yeah, that ain't me. <laughs> yeah. That ain't me. And be a different guy. Doesn't work. Yeah. Doesn't work. Okay, so you see asymmetrical haircut. You're like you're going to be in a wig later. <laughs> and she's already pissed at us because we're late. Or like our time has started. So Trey May. And all I know, Trey May. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trey May. May was running a little late to this. I and look how late. look how everybody's having a great time. It just happens. Yeah. I did something earlier today, 15 minutes late. Really? You're in a safe place. Okay, cool. Everything's cool. So um, you do your safety things. And I know from reading the blurb online that there's a live actor involved. Because they got to tell you. Yeah. In the 80s, they, they wouldn't you. tell you. No. Now they tell you. Yeah, now because you could knock them out or of something course. like panic. The 80s was insane. And everyone's the 80s on code. Was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone just comes up and, and it was dangerous and the live actor was always Michael Douglas and it facts in the game in the, in the 80s yeah yeah <laughs> It was always Wall Street. Oh my God! Every movie went to Michael Douglas in the eighties. Yeah, if we're remembering the eighties correctly. Also, he, he never was in played everything. a poor person. No, ever. he was. He has rich face. He's always in a gray suit. 
Yeah. Rich face. Rich face. By the way, Val pointed out to me, some people have glasses face. It's one of the funniest uh. observations. <laughs> well, even if they don't have glasses. That's what I'm saying. It's not funny if you see them with glasses and go, this person has glasses face. But if you see someone who isn't wearing glasses yeah. and Val goes, that person has glasses face. I'm trying face, to figure out if you have it right now. I'm like, I don't. Yeah. Okay, I, okay. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, I also don't have smoker face. I know you yeah. used to smoke. Yeah, I've started I, again. Well, you did. I'm having two per day. Two per day. I look forward to it all day and I got to stop. I You're don't doing the Sarah Silverman it. program. Is that what she does? Yeah. It's also two a show day. on Comedy Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I just realized yeah. that was an accident. Um, I think she's open about this that she also is in a case, like a one or two, and she yeah. loves it. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Hey, can I ask you something real quick? Y- yeah. Have you tried the gum? Nicorette. Yeah. Uh, no. Because I'm going to, I'm not even trying to change you. Yeah. This is, in fact, a bubble of cocoon to celebrate you. And, and they're don't a sponsor. Worry, we're, yeah. And also, nic- nicorette.com slash weird for 10% added <laughs> to your bill. It's, it's yeah. 10% more expensive. <laughs> but those proceeds go to us. Mm. Um, nicotine is a wonderful chemical mood elevator. Yeah. Appetite repressant, um, brain stimulant. It's a yeah. nootropic. It helps you think, which is why so many writers like Mark Twain, that cliche. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So you're not crazy for wanting your cigarettes. Yeah. It's also incredibly addictive. Um, and this is almost over. And don't worry, everybody. We're going to get back to the escape room and we're going to get back to the C. Martin thing and we're going to get back to the very good <laughs> the compliment. Thing we have, and the thing and we the have in common. Yeah, yeah. The thing mm-hmm. we have in common mm-hmm. is sort of the compliment. Okay. Uh, meaning just... Anyway, we're both awesome. <laughs> we're both awesome and we both wear one hat. Yeah. And they're both black. Yeah. The, the, my hat is also black. This is navy. Oh, I'm, I'm colorblind. <laughs> Are you it's really? True. Facts. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So... Uh, Sorry to feel a little shame. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I I really can't see it though. That's that's exactly the the shade that I can't. It's just on the edge. Yeah, it's right there. You yeah. could also tell me that's a wine red. Really? Yeah, it's fun. Huh? But isn't it weird? Why do I know I'm wrong? Like I know it's not. But yeah. If you told me it was, I could tell. Like the yellow uh, gold dress, the white gold dress. You saw wine red. You know what I saw when I looked at that? The movie Avatar. <laughs> The whole movie played when I looked at that dress. <laughs> okay, real quick. Um, just my my smoking friends, the problem is carbon monoxide. This is almost over, and yeah. I'm not trying to save you. No, I want to be saved. Nicotine is fantastic. Yeah. Get nicotine. Remember the big tobacco yeah. thing? Yeah. They were like, well, cigarettes are just a nicotine delivery system. Yeah. So nicotine itself is a, is benign. It's like caffeine. It's not really. The only thing that sucks about it is that it's hugely addictive, which means if you go off of it, you're yeah. going to want to fucking burn down a building. Yeah, it's just a stimulant, like a it's, mild stimulant. It's a stimulant yeah. and it's control. It's it's yeah. it's crazy May. I'm saying crazy May meaning the world is crazy. Yeah. We want it to be more like a, a escape room. We oh, want please. this to mean something. We want to count this. Yeah. So nicotine is a winnable game. Yeah. You feel a deficit. You're feeling anxious or you're feeling low. Yeah. It's this thing that you can do that is going to reliably elevate your heart rate. You're it's like going on a language. walk. Yeah. No, I think we have a lot in common. Yeah, very addictive personality. I'm yeah, also yeah. an addict. Yeah. Are you? So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so this is happening, right? Yeah. The gum is fucking dope. Let me tell really? you about the gum. <laughs> We're almost over. I'm gonna get it. For, do don't chew it like you're chewing. Are you chewing gum right now? I want to put it out. Don't. Feel- what is this? Math class? Well, Please enjoy I just your gum. Like, what if you hear me chewing? Nobody it? cares. People love it. People really? love me. Uh, Hooray, May Martin. You can put it right there on the table. What is it? What, 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 what is, what, what is this church? Like, I'm, hiding it. I'm just hiding it there. Put it there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> don't chew it like gum. Okay. Chew it once, uh, twice, break it, then put it up like sn- like snus. So it's like it's like you put it in your in what your gum. What if I then still want to smoke? Like you won't. If okay. you smoked, you'd you'd vomit. If you, really, it'll make it you like goes shaky so and... into your blood oh. that you'll be like if you sm- and if you did smoke, yeah, no problem. It's just more nicotine. Yeah. So I would say keep doing your one or two a day, but introduce the gum. Yeah. Park it. And here's the the other sales pitch, and, and they're not a sponsor. I, I I don't know why we're. I, I'm taking this much time because it, honestly, it's a big thing. Smoking yeah. is a big thing. Yeah, yeah. And I quit for you ten can, years, and and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just in the pandemic, like I get yeah. it. I get yeah. it. Well, l- more on that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's circle back. But, but to close the thing is you can do it anywhere. You could be doing it right now. I shot yeah. an entire pilot. I used to chew Nicorette. With it lodged? With it lodged. I imagine because if I that's what to... Marlon Brando was doing in The Godfather. He just had wads of Nicorette <laughs> here and just like tons of nicotine. <laughs> <laughs> you think his energy would have been higher. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it really was something like Sluggish. you'd have to prod him with an electric yeah. charge every once in a while. And he'd be like, man, keep it up. We're still making fun of that poor man. Yeah. But anyway, try that. Two, 
I, the, the, the cigarette itself is this other psychological tie. Mm. It's this beacon that you burn that says, no one tells me what to do. And I'm alone. Yeah. It's this like, get away from me. But also mm. I want to be attracted to other people yeah. that also see death everywhere. Yeah. See abandon everywhere. Yeah. You're, you're sort of Nihilist. facing it. Nihilist. Yeah. 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 And, you know. It, it, and there's the oral fixation. Like there's, you know. And it's an excuse to go outside. Yeah. I get all of it. I'm in a writer's room right now. I'm doing for, and so, you know. Yeah, so, plug it. Yeah. Seize two? Uh, no, um, a new show. A new, new show. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's nice to. You do like, two I simultaneous go. shows? No, I only did, I did two seasons of one show and that's done for good. Oh, forgive and forget. I didn't know it was done. It, it, yeah. Did you want it to keep going? Yeah. I've been, uh, to be honest, in every interview, I've been like, no, you know, we really wanted to leave it where yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. But uh, just, yeah. This is the real one. Of course. Look, yeah. if we bond over Alcatraz. I wanted one more season. Yeah, I but it. I think we did leave it. It's the British, like, they're sh short seasons, like six episodes. Yeah, no one would know. Yeah. It would be like, oh, it was a British It was show. a mini series. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. The Office, the most famous British oh, show. Two per seasons. And it's perfect. And it is perfect. But also, Maybe you could do a Christmas special. I would do that, but yeah. also it's like, it's all about a couple and you'd have to just have them keep breaking up and you know yeah. what I mean? You'd yeah, have to yeah, just yeah. torture them forever. Look, I was sitting right there when I found out that HBO's Crashers, it's called Crashing, I call it Crashers for fun, was canceled. And it, <gasps> and I don't know why I'm saying it like it's a tour. Over here where yeah. Katie is. But, and it actually was a relief because, but we had done three seasons, but yeah. so I, I, I feel you both ways. Yeah, there is yeah, a relief yeah. to it. And I get, we could have done a fourth as well, but yeah. you, you start very quickly going like, it's okay, because it's what's happening. Yeah, and you don't want the characters to start behaving out of character. You know what I mean? Well, in our case, yeah. season four, my character would have started to succeed. And I was like, the show's called Crashing, Not Flourishing. Yes, yeah, yeah. He was just about to start doing, doing well. well. Yeah, I was yeah. like, that's not the show. The whole show was supposed to be like most comedians... This is the backdrop for my talk show. Yeah. Don't get a talk show. That would have been season four. Yeah. And then it's it's a different show, even though there's crashing involved in that. My The writer's room I'm doing is on the lot where they filmed the Larry Sanders show. No yeah, kidding. And I can, I'm what like, fun. Yeah, I'm geeking out Do you hard. love it? So is I this a new it, yeah. May show? It's a teen thriller. I mean, they haven't greenlit. They just greenlit the writer's room. So it's like a teen thriller sort of comedy uh, and I'm just a supporting character, but I, yeah, I'm into it. But you're, really in, you're it. involved in the writing. Yeah, it's my, yeah, it's like I'm showrunning. You pitched it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's your show. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. and they, they have a writer's room for the pilot. No, done the pilot. We're oh, going to write the all the scripts. <gasps> yeah, so it's like. A, this but, sounds very good to me. It's the longest. It, I, I don't think I've ever been Monday to Friday in a office, like yeah. since I was about 24 or something. Yeah. Because in England, we just wrote in my, it's just me and my friend wrote both seasons. And this is like <clears throat> the first time I've been. You and Stephen Merchant. I understand. Yeah, yeah. Works. Me and my friend, <laughs> Stephen Merchant. Yeah. <laughs> That's how all shows in England get written. <laughs> you get Stephen Merchant. You, you either have Ricky or Stephen. <laughs> yeah. And you chose yeah, yeah, Stephen. Yeah, yeah. Of course. I understand. Of course. Yeah, yeah the yeah, brains yeah, yeah. of the opera. <laughs> I, I yeah, completely yeah, yeah. understand. <laughs> I'm. This is very interesting to me. Cause, yeah. Because again, doing Crashing, being in a writer's room, I was like, what? This is weird. Like It's so weird to me. It's like a nine to five, but it's sometimes if that's bad, then it's worse. If that's good, then it's better. But yeah, it, like yeah. sometimes it's eight to seven. You know? yeah. It depends on what you want to do. It's super fun, there, but I'm yeah. not used to, um, I mean, I'm used to being like, the, you know, I feel like a teenager yawning in the corner and like looking yeah. at the, the, so I'm trying to inspire and confidence. You're as a running leader. it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I would immediately hire someone else to run it. I'm co-show running with okay. um with an amazing guy who thank God has like an attention span. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. Cuz <laughs> my this is bad advice potentially, but my style was uh did you watch Mad Men? Yeah. Was Don Draper. I was like I I need to be able to leave. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I want to yeah. leave and yeah. Judah Miller who ran our room was was our steady Eddie yes. who had an attention span who like kept things going. That's great. But I was really like I'll be here from I, you know, this isn't always true, but I'd like to be there from like nine to two. And then I'm mm. like, I got to go. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that's for everybody, but that worked for me. So yeah. maybe you can start unloading those afternoon hours. Because if you a go control home and, freak, though. <laughs> and then, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, but what are they going to do? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just now, I'm like, they're going to watch this. I'm, what, yeah, yeah. I want to inspire confidence. What's that? I want to inspire confidence so badly. But the other day I did go, oh, I have a really important call, guys. Sorry, I'll, I'll be right back. And then I went in my office and... Um, Wrote? Well, no, I I 
like to list every country in the world to soothe myself. And and so on Sporkle, that website, you can, so I've memorized. What's Sporkle? Sporkle is like, there's thousands of, of quizzes. So it could be like movie posters or trivia. And It's just um, quizzing you to like alleviate anxiety. I, it's I'm just assuming. like a, fu- yeah, I memorized 197 countries in the pandemic. And so then. In I, order? In alphabetical? Uh, I do it in a weird, I start in the South Pacific and then I go oh, it's up. it's spatial. Yeah, it's spatial. Yeah. And okay. <laughs> but I just find if I haven't done it in the day, I feel a little out of sorts. I got to do it. I understand. But it was funny that they all thought I was having a call and I was like, Fiji, Kiribati. <laughs> like it's very <laughs> obsessive. But um, well, it is, well, it's, is it, it's compulsive as well. I mean, there's a compulsion to do it. I think I don't compulsion have needs to, to do be, it. Like, well, stand up's a compulsion. Too. I'm trying to make you not feel othered. Yeah. I have compulsive yeah. behavior as well. For sure. Everyone has compulsive behavior. It's about making sense of things. It's like okay, that the feeling when I do the 197th one and it's like, you yeah. know, a little like animated uh, thing goes off. Yeah. I'm like, great. Okay. But it's an escape room. It's an escape room. But here, look, you, again, this isn't old man Holmesy gives me Martin advice, but there, <laughs> there are t- two very weird hats that you're wearing right now. One Alcatraz of the- and <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, three. Yeah. A Chicago Alcatraz hat that you got with your dad. <laughs> but I think you can either create this show, mm-hmm. which I'm assuming the pilot you wrote mm-hmm. in a fever of of when uh, inspiration yeah. and feeding yourself creatively, fe- feeding yourself socially, feeding yourself psychologically, yeah. physically, all these things were lining up and, and it spills out of you. And then and now you're trying to recreate that energy. Yes. So inspired May. Yes. So let's picture inspired May. There you are. You have the the young Einstein haircut from the 80s. I'm like, like writing with a quill in my yes. mind. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Candle Shakespeare light. in love. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, Joseph yeah. Fiennes in, in Shakespeare in yeah, love. Yeah. And why hasn't he been in more movies, Joseph? I don't understand. It's a really good question, but right? there must be a reason. There's got to be a you reason. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it's not his performance. <laughs> There's always a reason. There's always a reason. Yeah. Don't dig <laughs> yeah, too yeah. deep on the Joseph Fiennes. <laughs> <laughs> but every time I think about him, anyway. Mm. Two, you're trying to keep people inspired, which basically is a job that I would argue other people can do. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to convey th- that original feeling and the the tone that I, and, the, and the reason that I'm excited about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's exhausting. Yeah. Trying to get other people as excited about your project as you are is really dumb. Yeah. Luckily and a waste the, of energy. My co-show runner is amazing and having, yeah, because it was the same with my other show. I had my, my best friend Joe was, so just having another person who cares about it as much as you is really helpful or like you had that woman. Who? Steady Eddie. Oh, I said Judah. Judah. Judah was a yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Judah Miller was wonderful. He and he really kept things oh, I, I, running. Sorry, I thought Judah was Jude, like Judy. Judy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Judy Miller. Judy Miller. <laughs> Judy Miller. We also. Uh, well, I don't. I don't want to bore people. It's interesting. I do want to leave you just with one kernel, which is like the way you do it is the right way. That's and cool. And you don't need to be in charge of other people's interior states. You can't be in charge of other people's interior states. And the writer's room is a tool for you to use. And when mm. you say, what, are they, what I'm a control freak, so I can't mm. leave, whatever they do is just for you to yes or no. Mm. John Stewart would say, the writers come up with things that inspire you to write the thing. They don't write the show. That's they come. Cool. They generate ideas for you. You look at them. You use your instinct and your gut and your vision. I would say your job is not to install your vision into other computers. Yeah, that's You cool. just hold on to it and maintain it. And if that means taking a nap or going on a walk or doing your country thing, like <laughs> yeah. another thing Conan said, he was like, your job is to be in a, in a creative and good flow state. Oh, that's, that's your cool. job. It's not to motivate troops. You think I couldn't, you could hire yeah. me to motivate your troops and I don't yeah. know anything about your show. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know what I mean? So anything you can outsource, outsource. That's really true. And and also they are all really, really smart and uh, that's yeah. already happening where they're, yeah. Um, but it is weird. Like having, I was in London for 12 years. So there's like a whole language I don't know of and uh, just the lingo of writer's rooms and that whole process. So I, yeah. I have like imposter syndrome, but 
oh, get but the fuck like, out of here. Like breaking Stop a story. I'm like, for you. No. that just means figuring out the story, it right? It means figuring out the yeah, story. Yeah, you know what There's I mean? There's like 15 terms and you're done. Right? Get okay, yeah, here. yeah. That's the one to beat. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Shut up. You're like, that's why, sorry, this this is something that's close to my heart is, yeah. is helping comedians go from being waiters to restaurant owners. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and it seems so daunting, but I'm like, really just, be a waiter, like keep being a waiter and just know that there's a staff yeah. there that's there to help you. Yeah, They're that's there to cool. help you. And if and if the best use of your time is to leave and write the script mm. and then come back and kick it around with them, there's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. Like you don't have to be in the room. By the way, maybe there's someone watching that's like, don't tell people this. Because ours was an HBO show. Judd was there. It was different. We kind of felt like we could do whatever we wanted it to a set as long as Judd was happy. Yeah. But I, I think he would agree with me. It's like you're trying to paint a dream mm. <laughs> and it's your dream. That's nice. And the writers are there to... They're the colors of the wind. Yeah, they're the colors of the wind. And one of them is Pocahontas. Yeah. <laughs> and one of them is Mulan because it's one of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Pocahontas. Yeah, it's Pocahontas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we both knew it was Pocahontas. We knew. Okay. Just because people may, might not care about uh, show business as much as me, but I do think we're actually talking about self-love, greenlighting your own process, and that applies to every aspect of life. Confidence, imposter yes. syndrome. Yes. Yeah, I have that a lot. Yes. And also I, I, my instinct is to go self-deprecating. So like, especially in England, like just to go in like, well, obviously th I'm a piece of shit and right. everything I say is stupid, right. but it, it feels like Of course that's you say, not, I'm a wanker and a bell end. I'm a wanker yeah. and a bell right. end. <laughs> Please, you can use the terms. We yeah. know the terms. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> But you'd go self-deprecating. Yeah, and here that seems like not the thing to do. Like, well, there's a I, culture of like, yeah, I'm, I got this. Which it's is, faking it, it's like faking fake it, it yeah, and yeah. look like confident and all that sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah, that's why I liked Don Draper. I know he's a fictional character, and I know he's a monster in a lot of respects. But <laughs> one of the things he did right was he he would nap in his office or he would smoke a cigarette. I know I'm trying yeah. to get you off cigarettes, but he yeah. would, I just <laughs> admitted smoke a my, delicious my cigarette. agenda. He'd smoke a toasted Lucky Strike. Yeah. I um, watched Mad Men with my grandmother in England that she was this old British woman. Yes. Passed away now, but we watched this together and she, we were watching, um, there's like sex scenes in it. Yeah. And, uh, so I think there's a scene where they're having sex. She's on top of a laundry, like a washing machine that's going like this. Yeah. And they're they're boning, and I'm like, oh my god, what this is so awkward. And then it cuts to the next scene, and my grandma goes, "Did she make it? Like, did she come?" Basically, my grandma wanted to know if did the, she uh, make did it? She, did she make it? I'm like, yeah, isn't that wild? I was like, I don't know, they didn't show that part. But I hope. Let's so. watch it again with closed caption. Yeah. If it says sound of completion, your yeah. grandmother can rest easy. Totally. I don't think did Don Draper was make making it? a lot of women come though. I I think it was all about him. Uh, the 50s. As a huge fan. Okay, tell me. Yeah, because I, I don't remember. A I'm going to give you show based evidence as yeah, to why yeah, I yeah. think you're Okay, wrong. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <To> the, <laughs> First of all, as a concept, you're completely right yeah, for men like, in that time. Yeah, yeah. And everything that he represents, <laughs> had the show been a little bit more honest, it is a soap opera yeah. and it is a um, fantasy. Yeah. Meaning the fantasy extends so far that not only is he a narcissist but and an nihilist, in but he's also making women come, which is. Yeah. Uh, which yeah, is yeah, insanity. That's true. No, you're right. No though, yeah, narcissistic yeah. nihilist <laughs> is also like, did you make it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're just going for it. But there, there's the the scene where he gets really mad at, um, I believe her name is Dick Dickie Barrett's wife. So Bobby Barrett. So, yeah. Uh, so Bobby Barrett says, I want the full Don Dra Don Draper treatment. Whoa. And he's like, What does that mean? And he's like, women talk about you. So it's hot. such a Yeah, okay. You, cool. I love that you thought it was hot. That I was ready hot. to be like, that's disgusting. No, no, but, I want the Don Draper treatment. That's so hot. Everyone I mean, does. Come yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Somebody that there's lore about. Yeah. And like, you're in line. You're oh in line God. for that ride. Imagine. Yeah, imagine being like that. Having a reputation, you Having, mean? Yeah. A sensual reputation. A sensual that reputation. You? Yeah. I hope I have that. <laughs> I mean, how would you ever know? Well, you hear. Well, it. and he gets really mad at her. He actually oh. leaves. Oh, he ties her to the bedpost. So wait for think, real? Yeah, and then he walks out. And he and he. Oh wait, the fantasy's ruined. I know because he's he's a narcissist. At, I mean, he has narcissistic tendencies. I don't know if he has the full disorder, but it seems like he might. I'm remembering this now. And he, that he it's ties because her. his name means everything to him. Right. So like he doesn't want people talking about him. Oh, okay. The whole thing 
is secrecy. Don't get yes, me started. Of course, Unfortunately, of course. you've gotten me started. Because he also <laughs> wants to be considered a good husband. Yeah. And and not a philanderer. Yeah. So he's, he represents the cognitive dissonance that all of us have. Yeah. And deep in our identity. Yeah. Like you're a monster and you're an angel. Like both At of these things are myself. happening constantly. Our shadow selves. Our a- shadow selves. Apparently, we're supposed to not be at war with our shadow cells. We're supposed to embrace it yeah. and, and look it in the eye. And yes. Because the more friction there is, the the more kind of splintering, right? That's exactly yeah. right. And yeah. you're the first guest to bring up shadow, shadow cells before I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I knew you would. Uh, we'll get back to <laughs> the compliment and we'll get back to the escape room. But that does seem to be part of your show and your work. And, and just so you feel safe, mine too. Like I love looking at the what is... I don't even like the word broken. Let, let's say interesting or complicated. Yeah, and in conflict and in conflict. Yeah, or or well, just nuanced in any way. And yeah, yeah. And the way the, the when we were talking about nicotine, uh, substances have those things too. Like I, I, I won't project onto you. I'll say for me. Yeah. What was appealing about things like alcohol and to a lesser extent drugs was the guaranteed experience of it. Yeah. Everything seems so so. Sometimes, I mean, calling Dr. Freud, but I'd say this to my mother and it would upset her. And then I'd say this very similar thing to my mother and it would make her happy. So I'm over here going like, what is reality? And then you're like, you drink this and it makes you drunk. And I was like, I like this shit. Well, (laughs) do you know, um, like Gabor Mate, that guy, he's this writer and, and, well, he was a doctor. I think I used his face cream. (laughs) (laughs) No, I know who you're thinking of. (laughs) Gabor Mate? Yeah. Someone, it sounds yeah. like a face cream. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and I love your yes hand. Yeah. <laughs> I went with it. I loved it. You know, um, but he says you've got to first, if you're investigating why you're an addict, it's like, well, what is it giving me first? You look at the pluses and like, it's yeah. giving you something huge. Like, right. yeah, whatever that is. Confidence. Like a guaranteed experience. Or, yeah. Yes. Sense of whatever. For me, yeah. Presence. What was it for you? I guess like being present. Uh, Boo- like booze? I think Coke was my big Coke thing. Coke made you more. And oh my it, God, and it, it was like. Brought you into your experience. Yeah, it was like I, there was suddenly four walls around me for the first time. Like I just felt like, really? uh, yeah, and confident. I was a, you know, awkward weirdo. And um, I just was talking to somebody about the Vanity Fair party, which is kind of like a famous um, party. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that exists. <laughs> there are famous parties in LA. Don Draper's yeah, part exactly. of parties. Yeah. I'm sure Johnny Ham was at this party. And I went for some reason. Uh, one year, it had to be a promo thing. And I went to the Vanity Fair party, and I really didn't enjoy it. And I'm not saying that to be, oh, I'm so special, and I'm, I'm too spiritual for that. <laughs> I just was overwhelmed. It was a very basic thing. I was yeah. like... What do I do here? Yeah, who do I talk to? And I talked to somebody. I won't say who it was, but he he's in recovery. And he was like, yeah, those parties are fun if you're on cocaine. Yeah, and I yeah, was yeah. like, oh. oh. By the way, I'm not saying why, yeah. anyone should do cocaine, but I, I do look around and I'm like, why are these people? Yeah. Some of the people are just rocking it. Really? And I think they're on cocaine. Looking back, I think, I think so. they're like... Because if you're on cocaine and Taylor Swift walks by, that's a fun time. Oh, you're like, hey, <laughs> yeah, hey, how you doing? Yeah, Taylor Swift. You're, you're like, you're like Taylor Swift is going to be really excited to talk to me. Exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Imagine you're Michael Douglas in the '80s, <laughs> and you're you're at the Vanity Fair Smack. party in the '80s. He's welcome anytime. And was he on? Co- <laughs> we don't probably. I'm I mean, sure, I feel like they right? All were. They, yeah, come like on. Basic were. instinct must have been just. Apparently, on the set of Star Wars, they were all. Blown rails. No. I don't know what the link. I, don't I'm not ruin to be Star cute. Wars for yeah. me. But I think also, they were coked up. I just read because they didn't know it was going to be a hit, so they're just doing oh, right. this they're terrible like, sci-fi movie. So yeah, of course they're, like they're just sucking Wookie, it down. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, you're the Wookiee. Yeah, <laughs> like really getting through the day. Except Mark Hamill, I believe Mark Hamill oh, was not you. invited to the cocaine party. Good, he's a pure angel. Yes. Yeah, his lightsaber is green for a reason, bitch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know why yeah. the bitch there, but it no, happened. I like okay, that. Also, did you know I'm a big survivor fanatic and I just was reading because I'm the new season starts this week season 44 Ooh. can't wait um, oh wow but I didn't know we're that on the I'm, Obama season yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a weird I can't believe you got it I like I that it. a lot yeah which means next season's Trump season so oh, it's all right. it'll be real intense yeah <laughs> um, it they found on a previous season washed up on the beach a kilo of cocaine they were in like 
I, I, in like Venezuela or something. Please, can you tell me the truth right now? That's this the is... truth. I'm going to send you the article. No, I believe you. I just can't believe you. And actually, you know what? This ties in with what we were saying because there was a contestant called Shane who was the only contestant I've ever seen who was in nicotine withdrawal. Because I always wonder, like, he was a chain smoker his whole life and then he's there on the beach. What they do on the island. He's losing his mind. And uh, he was open about it and he'd have these big outbursts. Because yeah. it's like heroin, like... Yeah. They anyway, said, yeah, it's a cliche, but people coming back from Vietnam said it was harder to quit nicotine than it was to quit heroin. Yeah. But you can't go to the corner store and buy heroin. Although that's you true. Kind of could. You can go to the park, I suppose. But like, it's much easier. Yeah. To buy buy cigarettes. I think it makes you crazy. Yeah. So and then on so Shane's freaking out, and then yeah. <laughs> he's walking down the beach, and there was a kilo of coke, and can he I please? he ran and hit it. Uh, in the forest. Were the cameras on him? At that moment, no. But then the <gasps> producers found out and they and he, no one had done any apparently, but they they took the they took it away. But he was like, I should have done it before the challenges. Like, the writers are like, we're gonna safe keep this for you. And then the yeah, next challenge yeah, is like, yeah. okay, you have to water ski down this yeah, mountain yeah. and do seven <laughs> flips. It's gotta be seven flaps. And yeah, you're like, he's like, and then what? Yeah. <laughs> did you guys find my uh, package? Yeah. That is again, as somebody who's dealt with addiction, mm. the feeling. That, that's filled a metaphor for me. Yeah. Meaning I know exactly how this man felt. Yeah. In withdrawal from a, a stimulant. Yeah. So nicotine. Finding a secret. In fact. Like a brick. Of- doesn't that just speak to something? For me it does. This The secretness. Mm. The secret friend. And I, I, it's I don't very- want to awaken the werewolf in you. No, I, no. I, I really I just want to concede that I want to be sensitive. And if this is. Uh, inciting in any way. Uh, sorry, I, no, no, that I was a weird flare it. up. I just want, yeah, yeah I just yeah, want to yeah, make yeah. sure we're both cool. Yeah. Uh, the secret thing about yeah. like, I'm going to bury this in the woods and no one's going to know. Totally. Right? A control thing. And I mean, even just acquiring and then having drugs, like in a little thing and all the yes. paraphernalia. And like, it's, it's very an weird. And, it's another escape room. <laughs> it's an escape it really room. Yeah. Is. It's Wait, like, I should tell you about the woman with the knife. Yeah, you may. <laughs> okay. You may. We Mother, won't forget may to I? talk about Okay. This. So I go to the escape room. The the awkward girl is there. I know she's going to... It's not like they've hired another actor no, who's... they yeah, don't have yeah. the budget for that. And um, we... So we know she's going to appear at any point. And at one point, uh, it's like in an apartment and the, there's a shower running in the bathroom. It was really high production value. We can hear the shower running and we can hear a woman being like... Da, 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 in the shower. So she's in the shower. Yeah, and we're like, fuck. And, and we know we have to go in there and get a key while she's in the shower. And and uh, Can I ask seven questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is she naked? That's I was really just one I, question. We never saw her naked. The no. implication was, but she was a ghost, dead. She's oh, a dead person, yeah. So you don't want to see dead boobies. No. no. Maybe you do. <laughs> well, do you remember that movie? <laughs> um, seven ghosts or something or 13 ghosts? or 13 ghosts? There was a hot one. Oh, hot ghost. Yeah. Well, I would argue that the ghost that Jack Nicholson sees in the bathtub in The Shining, it's one of the most uh, haunting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she deteriorates in his arms. Yeah. I'm like, that's... I think about The Shining so often. Yeah. Like, it's... That I, moment. I, it, the whole movie is just so movie. deep in my... I agree. Have yeah. you seen Room 237? Yes. About, yeah, yeah, I love yeah, yeah. It. I'm obsessed. Are yeah, you yeah, obsessed yeah, with yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> and anytime I'm in a, any hotel corridor and like, the just the... The quiet, the yep. sort of humming electricity in the carpets, and I'm I get like a little nervous. Facts. Mm. Can I just say I, I've never thought this before. We sort of feel like hotels. Like <laughs> I'm a hotel. <laughs> yeah. And everything that was happening in that hotel is happening. I mean, that makes me sound insane, but I have a basement filled yeah. with the memories of slaughtering Native Americans. Do you yeah, know what I mean? That's like, so as a good. white European, and interesting. Like, that's yeah. In my, and and I have elevators filled with blood from what we eat to yeah. leather of our shoes. It, like there's all this repression yeah. of the consequences of living in duality, which is someone wins means someone loses. Yeah. And I mean that kind of without exception. Yeah. Like it's obviously with war and stuff, but even micro mm. transactions, social transactions, yeah. even stand up comedy, I killed or I died. Everything is yeah. windows and we repress all of that violence. I'm using violence very liberally, but I mean Yeah, it. And violence like, against ourselves too. And, and just violence like, against ourselves. And also like the the fact that 
like the pressure of being loved and loving your your very close people and can't. you know what I mean and the, it's I got you right away you can't he uh, wants to love his, he his wants son to love and, his family. and wife yes. yeah and provide for them and yes. it's it can yeah I think it but he's it broken. Expresses some like claustrophobia of like I can't. Yeah, and then because there's too much shit in the basement. Yes, there's uh, too much shit in the basement. There's too many uh, Native American burial grounds. Yeah, there's and too all much work and no play makes it, like. <laughs> he's and I, and yeah. then you add the burden of support and, yeah. and work and and the and the myth that he had to do that and right parenthood and, and yeah parenthood and 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 is the son a stepchild. Oh, that's interesting. I think it might be a stepchild. I think that adds to his discomfort. I'm yeah, not saying yeah, yeah. that's good or right. I'm just saying he's he yeah. can't find himself in his life. Yeah. He's literally in a labyrinth and he yeah. literally freezes. And yeah. that's us. I think that's why. See, this is why I knew we would get along. There's people that like relate. <laughs> yeah. like, there's some people you go like, don't you feel like the Overlook Hotel? Yeah. And they're like, no. No, it's his real kid. I'm sorry. I thought it was his it's his, uh, it's his, it's real his kid. blood child. I'm trying to say it. Not That's interesting. Real. I go, blood, blood child. child. <laughs> Sounds so much weirder. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, right. His, it's yeah, not yeah. his stepchild. Okay. Can I just say he seemed like a stepdad? Yeah, because really? he's sort of disconnected. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. But, but he wants. He he wants to be good. Yeah. 237. What else? Did you have something? Because I'm going to take you back to the shower. Oh, the, the uh, no, shower. I just love it and... Um, oh, I was going to say not everyone relates. That, that's to what, being the like, Overlook like, Hotel, feel, yeah. Or do you relate to the feeling of Jack? I relate to the wo- the woman. I project my mom onto that yeah. woman too hard. Oh, and, and I project horrific. myself onto that boy. Yeah. Like, I, again, I feel like having two Greek gods, yeah. your parents, and my parents didn't get along. Oh, really? Yeah. Is like being snowed in a weird hotel for, oh my for God. what, 18 years? I'm not saying my childhood was not The Shining. Yeah. But there's a feeling of lack of control, which again brings us a little bit back to addiction. It's like, yeah. of course you're looking for... Stand-up comedy is also a control freak's delight. Yeah. If you're good at it, like if you get to a good place. And also just all teenagers want something private that's their own, right? You feel like you have no control over yes. your life. And so, yeah. Mulaney yeah. talked about, he had a bit mm. about like under his bed, he had a, a like a cigar box that had like a, a Cosmopolitan magazine and three cigarettes. Yeah. And there's I, something about, yeah. that's the cocaine on the Survivor beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 secret. When I quit drinking, I saw mm. the hormone monster from Big Mouth. Yeah. Literally, like I, I, I wasn't hallucinating, but... The way that I saw it was like a friend that was like, come on. Yeah. You yeah, don't want to yeah. remember me. I'd meet you on those weird road gigs. Oh, completely. And I had to watch yeah. it die. It was really hard for me. I guess you have to find a way to tap into that like sort of tortured artist ego like but healthily and, yeah. and be, be like, I can have that private space and, and make it for myself. And but it, Wait, tell know. me what you mean by that. Well, like, just like, I, I remember because my dad was a writer and I would was always like, how do you, I don't know, how do you have kids and be a right? I don't know, because you have to go to a different place in your mind, like Agreed. a sort of yes. egoic solo place. And he was like, you just learn to kind of just close the door and yeah. um, go, go there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I as we were walking in, I told you we moved out of the city, and that helped. So oh, really? I come yeah. and I do my set, and I drive home. Yeah, it's not that I used to come home and bring in the energy, but a little bit. <laughs> like roasting everyone. Yeah, I'd come home yeah. and be like, "Hey, Leela, what are you for?" Get yeah, the fuck out of here. No. but like, I've said this a million, but houses have thresholds because you're supposed to drop. It's a transition space. Yeah, yeah. You're supposed to put your briefcase down if you're Don Draper. Yeah, take your jacket off. It's to signify we are now leaving the battlefield of work. Yeah, and we're coming into a domestic area. Take your fucking shoes off. Yeah, you know what I mean? where I can so soften. And we like, need to yeah, soften. Yeah, yeah. So I use the ride to soften. That's but nice. You relate to that? Do I you mean, listen to music and all of it? Yeah, anything. I, anything I can do. Something that has nothing to do with me is very yeah. helpful. Yeah, or comedy. Or comedy in general. Yeah, I don't really even watch. Com- I watch murder and stuff. Let I mean. Yeah, you know, no, I get it. Yeah, yeah. And you go to and Survivor, rooms. and I go to escape rooms. And s- I, I, I want to talk about your love of Survivor, but let's finish. There's a woman <laughs> in the shower who you don't see naked, but the seven ghosts and shining. There are hot ghosts. Let's be real. Yeah, <laughs> and and all they said to us, we oh, there definitely are. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. All they said to us was they. She can't touch the actors. Can't touch you. Again, in the eighties, we didn't have that. They oh, were just in like, the eighties, they're going to touch you. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, horrific. Horrific. Michael Douglas's cold hand coming at you. <laughs> um, uh, 
I can hear his voice. Me but I too. Can't do it. Uh, it's like, like nasal, that. isn't it? Yeah. It's nasal, and there's a there's it's a like uh, it's like Elizabeth, who's on the phone or something. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was. But it had a cascading gravel to it. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, Ant Man. Yeah. When I saw him in Ant Man, I was like, maybe say no. You know he he said he got throat cancer from Kenny. going down on Catherine Zeta Jones. Kenny Ling. That's a wild thing to say in the press. Also, can we please? <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why not just say you smoke cigars? We know you do. We've seen you do it. We've heard your voice. Yeah, yeah. You're smoking shit. Yeah. Also, of all the things that can give you throat cancer, liquor can give you throat cancer. You immediately throw your wife's <laughs> pussy vagina under the, pussy. Under the can, bus? Are we gonna can say? We, are we gonna say? Are we gonna it? say yeah. Catherine Zeta <laughs> Jones's <laughs> pussy at <laughs> <laughs> the bus? <laughs> then that, I mean, can you imagine her reading that interview and being like? What? Really? Because Re- yeah. Look, he you, must bl- have said you it blame to her. the vagina. You, you're gonna blame the vagina. Do you think I'm picturing him coming home from the doctor's appointment and yeah, throwing his brief, his '80s briefcase down? He's like, you like, had oh. to go to second base. Yeah. Didn't you? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Always with the yikes. But that was a meeting. Like publicists, like all riffs aside. Do you think publicists were like, how do we get ahead of this? How do we make it hot? This diagnosis. <laughs> <laughs> and make you look like a badass. And guess who wasn't in that meeting? Catherine, Catherine Zeta. Zeta yeah. Oh my god. She was not consulted. <laughs> I mean, it's insane. I guess you can get. Let's not talk about it. Whenever people are like, you can get HPV in the back of your throat. I'm always like, you could Do also just not mention that. Never mention yeah, it. Yeah. Never talk about it. And I just did it. Okay. So there's a, a woman in a running shower. Yeah, and. So we get we go in and get the key, and there's no jump scare. And then sh- this dead woman comes out of the shower, and she kind of can't see us at this point, like she's because she, she's a ghost. So we're cowering in the corner, and she goes to her bed and lies down. But there's a key around her neck that we need to now get, and she's pretending to be asleep. And I know uh, if, when I go up there, she's gonna wake up and yeah. freak the fuck out. Seven sloth. Oh my god, yeah sloth. Yeah, seven sloth. Seven sloth. Seven period. <laughs> yeah, I'm sloth. With you. Really trying to help yeah. you hear yes. those periods. Seven period sloth. sloth. And seven is in italics, so you know it's a movie. Title. Yeah, I'm, I, I can <laughs> you see got. it so clearly. We all knew the sloth guy was gonna jump. Oh my and god, we yeah. Still hated every second of it. <sighs> That's very Iron John. Uh, I'm not going to tell the whole story uh, because I love telling the story of Iron John. Iron John is a story, uh, is a myth about masculinity. Mm. And William Blake wrote a book called Iron John. Anyway, suffice it to say, Iron John represents um, wildness. Oh, cool. And uh, he gets caged, this wild beast man, but he's a wise beast. Okay. So he's he's red and hairy, mm-hmm. um, just like Esau. I'm just putting that together. Jacob and Esau, his brother was wild and hairy. So he locks him, the king locks him in a cage, but then the, the prince loses a ball into the cage of Iron John and Iron John, mm. and the ball represents innocence because if you think about it, like a pregnant belly ah, is a ball. Yeah. We lose our innocence around the age that the boy, the ball goes in. Yeah. So the, the Iron John says, uh, you need to free me and I'll give you your Innocence back. He says the ball back. Yeah. Where's the key? Under your mother's pillow. Your mother does not dream. It's the space of her dreams. And she does not dream of having a wild man for a son. She dreams of respectable things, doctors, lawyers. Does this make sense? Sheriff. Yeah. Like, like something uh, nice yeah. and pretty. Wait, is is Iron John saying this? Iron John's, no, no, no. This okay, is analysis. Your interpretation. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's William Blake's analysis. Okay, okay. He's yeah. like, the pillow is under your, the key is under your mother's pillow. Yeah. It's also where your parents make love. So you have mm. to go in and steal. So Freudian, the whole it's thing. so Freudian. Yeah. But I love that it's under your mom's pillow. Mm. And you, un- I feel like I did this. I feel like I stole the key of my mother's dream that I would be a pastor. Yeah. And I would wow. be her sweet golden boy the rest of my years she doesn't know but I stole it from her bedroom unlocked my own wild man this doesn't mean bad man no, but, but it's your it's your power. Yeah, yeah. And it's also not gender specific. It's, it's this energy that we all have, yeah. which is like I'm gonna, and it's actually through embracing shadow. Yeah, through embracing wildness, um, decisiveness, and all of these wonderful things that returns you to your innocence. It's not 
going and sleeping yeah. between your mom and dad. It's not time for that. It's time to steal the key and free the wild man. It's crazy. I like that. that and also good? the more you repress it, the more it's going to burst out with That's violence. Right. Yeah. That's right. You try to put it in the cage. Yeah. Well, the first thing the king did that was right was he caught it and then he put it in the courtyard of the kingdom. That's actually the first step of health is you go, I weird. have a wild man. Yeah. You let everyone see. Guys, yeah. this is my wild man. <laughs> you don't put it in the basement like the shiny. Yeah. You put it in the courtyard. And nothing good happens in a basement ever. Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go to the mid rolls and then we're going to get to what happened when you took that key. Oh, I mean, no, nope, don't, don't even say it. Don't even say it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because the story <laughs> continues. It's a cliffhanger after the mid rolls. We'll be back in literally, uh, 120 seconds. Okay. Sweet. Weirdos, this episode is brought to us by a very new Pete's Pick. This is the first mention of LMNT. I'm saying it slowly. It's called Element because I heard about it from Dr. Huberman. I was watching a YouTube video of his talking about hydration, and he kept talking about an important part of his morning routine was putting element in his water to make sure he was getting hydrated, getting that boost of energy. And of course, you know, I'm super interested in everything that can help cognitive performance. So he kept saying, I put element in my water, but uh, I couldn't find it when I searched it. It's because it's L-M-N-T. It's spelled L, the letter L-M-N-T. And it is electrolytes and pretty much nothing else, meaning no sugar, no carbs, nothing nasty or artificial, but it tastes incredible. And what does it do? It helps you hydrate because healthy hydration isn't just about drinking water. It's about drinking water plus electrolytes. So this has become a huge and wonderful part of my morning routine. I look forward to it. It tastes fantastic. Gets me feeling ready to face my day. Also, it's wonderful after, as I just did, I just worked out and to replace that sodium and that water that I lost during the workout, both I get myself another element I absolutely love it. It's also just a sidebar. Sometimes at night, uh, I'll, I'll be craving food. I'll be craving something I just want to eat, and I'll have an element instead. And it's a wonderful way to make that I do intermittent fasting, make a fast more sustainable and easier to do because you're giving your body some of those calorie free things that it is craving. So you're giving it that support. So I am super, super excited. Like all the Pete's Picks, I found them first. I started using them, and then I reached out to see if they wanted to give you guys a promo code and support the show. So basically that's what's happening. This makes sense. You lose water and sodium when you sweat. Both need to be replaced to prevent muscle cramps, headaches, and energy energy dips. As I said, taking this in the morning gives me a great boost of energy, but most people are only replacing water. Why? Well, because since like 1942, we've been told to drink eight glasses of water per day, whether you're thirsty or not. But New research tells us that drinking beyond thirst is a bad idea. It dilutes blood electrolyte levels, especially sodium, which leads to those headaches and that low energy cramps, confusion, or even worse. It can be quite dangerous. This low sodium situation is super common among endurance athletes, and that solution isn't, uh, the solution isn't to just drink more water, it's to drink water and electrolytes. How do we do that? Enter, drink. LMNT, Element. Just mix this flavorful electrolyte mix into your water bottle and you're good to go. No sugar or artificial junk, just electrolytes and great taste. I always get dehydrated on planes as well, so I've been taking this when I fly and it's super wonderful. I don't have to pee three million times because I'm not drinking more water than I need, but I'm absolutely satiated because I'm ticking both boxes. LMNT has your electrolyte needs covered. Former research biochemist Rob Wolf and Keto, Keto, Keto Gains? Oh, Keto Gains, excuse me. Keto Gains founder Tyler Cartwright and Luis Villasenor formulated LMNT to provide the optimal ratios of sodium, potassium, and magnesium for health, performance, and energy. They also formulated Element, I'm gonna start saying Element now because I, I think that's how you're supposed to say it. To please your palate, try orange salt, citrus salt, or experiment with five other flavors like my favorite, which is watermelon salt, which is a classic flavor combo. And Element, I'm so happy they're working with us. They came up with a fantastic offer for us, for weirdos. Go to drink lmnt.com slash weird and use promo code weird to uh, you basically get a free, I want to make sure I'm getting this right, 
you get a free sample pack that includes one of every flavor when you make any purchase through the link. This is the perfect offer for anyone who's interested in trying all the flavors or wants to introduce a friend to Element. They have a no questions asked refund on all orders. You don't even have to send it back. So you could get the refund and still try it. This offer may be claimed for any first time or returning Element customers, and it's exclusively available through VIP Element Partners. You won't find this offer publicly available. So go to drinklmnt.com slash weird and use promo code weird for your free sample pack and get this, trust me, get this into your morning routine. It makes a huge, huge difference in my energy levels, in my mood, my brain function, my workouts, everything. I just love having this biohack to getting better hydration without having to drink nine gallons of water necessarily. I still drink a lot of water. I just make sure I'm getting enough electrolytes with it. So give it a try and get into it. I'm also, as you can tell, I'm not at home. I'm on the road. I'm in Toronto, as I mentioned. And of course, I have my element with me. I've got my perfect jeans over there. I'm wearing my Apollo. These are all the things I travel with. And this one here is my next Evo Naturals. This is their stress CBD complex. It is a hemp extract and ashwagandha, which is an adaptogen that helps your body naturally recover and cope with stress. The new year is a fresh opportunity to achieve your full potential, but you can't do that. You can't be your best if you're stressed. So get ahead of stress this year by experiencing the full potential of CBD with Next Evo Naturals. I, we've talked about a lot of these different CBD brands here, but the difference with Next Evo is they have completely cracked the code and it gets into your blood so much faster than other brands, certainly than other tinctures. These are gummies right here. Only Next Evo uses Smart Sorb CBD, proven to be 30 times better absorption in the first 30 minutes. So don't just use any CBD. Most CBD products on the markets, you only have two to 10% absorption. So 90%, at least 90% is wasted. And if you don't notice it, and if you don't feel it, and if it's not getting absorbed, you're not gonna notice it, and you're not gonna feel it, you're probably gonna say, CBD, CBD just doesn't work for me. Next Evo is here to completely change all that. It delivers four times better overall CBD absorption and has been proven in multiple clinical studies. So when I talk to people that say, I don't know why you like CBD, it doesn't work for me, it's probably because you're not absorbing it and you don't get your dose right because you don't know uh, when you feel it. You're not seeing any results. This absolutely changes that. And when you blend it with the ashwagandha that helps you with stress, that helps you with trouble sleeping and gets into your blood so much faster. They really, really figured something out with these gummies. So make CBD a part of reaching your full potential with Next Evo Naturals. Go to nextevo.com slash podcast and use promo code WEIRD to get 20% 20, 20 off your first order of $40 or more. That's 20% off $40 or more at nextevo.com slash podcast with promo code WEIRD. Show your body the support it needs and show this podcast some love and support as well. All right, everybody, let's get back into the second half of my chat with May Martin. Okay. <laughs> okay. There's no, it, this is the thing I've been, we've been dragging it out, but there's no real resolution except obviously she wakes up screaming. Can, no, no. The no, woman's no. lying dead on the bed. Hold on. <laughs> Who goes? I'll tell you what's a good story. Yeah. You go? Yeah, I go. Yeah. How was that decided? Uh, that's a really good point. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, I was trying to impress her. I think. Oh, so right. I it was a it date. Was I forgot it was, it was a date. date. So I think I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to go. But you wanted to be brave. I wanted to be brave, of course. You but, wanted to show them your ambition. And I'd also been like, no, nah, I do a lot of escape rooms. Like I, that was Michael Douglas. No, nah, I do a lot of escape uh, rooms. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> but then very quickly the tables turn because she wakes up screaming, the the dead woman with the key. So we run. We have to. We know there's like a salt circle that we, if we're in that circle we're safe. Um, and she can't the stab us. Yeah, very the witch. Do you know the Witcher? The witch I know. Oh, the Witcher. What's there's. The, 
Oh, that series. It's a series, yes. Henry Cavill. He puts these rings of stuff that will trap a witch inside of it or a spirit or something. I would do it in a in a pinch. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. In a panic. Why not try? Try it. You have salt. Yeah. And here's a witch. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if this What works. else are you going to do? And if it doesn't work, now you're just being murdered by a witch in a salty circle. Yeah, <laughs> which, which is humiliating. <laughs> um, At least you go out seasoned. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... I can I also a, tunnel. A, a, a tiny before you mm. get to this hole? Yeah. You can touch them? Yeah, yeah, you can get the key. In you balance. Can, they they <laughs> warn yeah, they warn you like D please don't punch the actors or like attack them in any way. Right. And also what's so weird is I know it's that awkward girl from the front but you just forget because she's in a full ma mask and like Like rubber mask? Yeah, and and long black like wig and classic ghost paraphernalia. Oh, they're going the ring on it. They're going pure ring. Yeah, but sort of She's singing in the shower, which I feel like the girl from the ring would not do. Unless it was like a haunting Japanese. Yeah, folk song. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anything scarier? Any child Sidebar. song. Oh, yeah. Slowed down. Twing. No. Right. So, yeah. I just wanted to try it. Three blind mice. I, three, three blind mice. Blind. <laughs> it's awful. I hate it. Yeah, yeah. Hate it. I went, I was with my daughter and we went into. No, I wasn't with Leela. I was with Val, and we were in New Mexico, and we went to this like heritage museum. So really, like PG, yeah. G, even yeah. this whole museum. But it was a celebration of Japanese folk horror. Oh, and there what? was this dark section. It was just all black, and there was a door. And I was like, "I'm gonna do it. Get out of oh here!" And I opened the door, and in the first room, there's a little black and white TV playing The Ring, just playing like the worst parts of The Ring. Oh my god! And there's a warning that says, uh, "Warning: There are live actors. There's jump scares. Like by going, there's strobe effects. If you have a heart condition." And I was like, "I'm getting the fuck out of here. Get out! I'm this isn't some there. small museum where they've just." I mean, this is act Whoa. one of a horror story. Like, oh my God. How did Pete die? He, he went into a, a, yeah. a heritage museum in New Mexico <laughs> yeah, yeah. and didn't turn away after there was a warning mudroom. But he was trying to impress his family. He was, I, you know, I was yeah. trying to impress myself and I failed. Yeah. No, you did the right thing. I think I did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. So you could touch the cold skin of this um, naked. No, she's not naked. You've made her naked, but she's in like a robe. <laughs> Don't make it that I made her naked. You said she was in the shower. <laughs> she came out dressed in like a white robe. and um, I don't like that. I know. And so we run, we get in the circle. So we're like, okay, we're safe. And then she, strobe lights, she comes in and, and now she has a huge knife. And she's like slashing at us, like just so close to us. And then I became full like coward. Like I just closed my eyes, waited for it to be over. Like it was curling into this person. Like, oh, you grabbed them. Oh, I grabbed them. So success. I was like shielding, like using them as a shield. Oh, you full yeah. Sinbad them. I did a full force measure, like like <laughs> just throwing them out of the way. Like it was a real moral. <laughs> I said Sinbad because in the special Afros and Bell Bottoms, he talks about being chased by Dracula and tripping the woman he's with. So that's what you did. <laughs> yeah. You just immediately. That's, you know, Brett Goldstein? Yeah. Yeah, so we went to. I was going to say, what's up with you and Brett Goldstein? Oh, now? yeah. We You're can, all about I, it. I love Brett Goldstein. By the way, good choice. Uh, the, what a babe. We went to um, my joke with, Halloween Horror Night. Sorry. What? Yeah. No. Please? I'm sorry. Who's the guest of this episode? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say up until this point, unclear. <laughs> you did what now? We went to Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights and it was like for- You and BG? Sure. Yeah. And in a group and, and we went through and the- Texas Chainsaw person came running at us and he gra Brett grabbed me and threw me at them and yeah. screamed Mavis, which is, is what, what he calls me. He goes, Mavis! And just like, I, it, I could, afterwards he it was like- He threw you like chum. Yeah, just to, to block this serial yeah. killer. Yeah. We had so much to unpack after. It was like, we, we got through the thing and then I just, we're finally out and I just like turned to him and was like, what happened? Like, what did he say? He was just like, I, I panicked. Like, he's like, look, Ross Kent would have saved you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Brett, <laughs> but Goldstein, Brett Goldstein tosses nah, you nah, right yeah. in the path of the danger. And I really thought, because he's big and strong, that I'd be hiding behind him. And yeah, no, it's the strong guys with the great bods that are like, I worked really hard on this. Yeah, I don't want I'm not anyone to let somebody right cut off my picks. Yeah, which is Brett's fake voice. That's his real voice is more like. Oh, I worked really hard on that. Can I say thank you? <laughs> Can I say thank you? Because Val loves Brett. Yeah, it's I love Brett. It's just this assumption that like she loves him 
and we all know it. Yeah. And I'm okay with it. Yeah. I, I say good choice. Good. But the way that I slightly tease Brady G, knowing full full well that he'll probably see this, <laughs> is that I go like, Oi, oi, Val, it's me. <laughs> Just kidding, it's me, Brett. <laughs> like, it goes, like, it's always like his real voice is a comedian's voice. Yeah. And then he does like a very Michael Douglasy. Sexy it's just a voice. normal human's voice. And then he's, yeah, and then he has this, Oi, you can go there. Yeah. He's very <sighs> sexy. Yeah. You're mad fit. Yeah, that right. was good. No, it was all right. Yeah, it was really good. Oh, I love, and then he's like, oh, I love Muppets Christmas. <laughs> I can't do his real <laughs> voice. Um, okay, so you're cuddling with your person. That's the end of the story, really, basically. Yeah. Are you just, still with this person? No, but not for that reason. Not because it wasn't like we got out and we were just the trauma was <laughs> too too much. That's enough of that. Yeah, that is enough of that. But it is. I do take. I do a lot of like first dates at escape rooms, and I I sort of thought that was normal. And it is a big ask, like to terrify someone. Well, I don't think you're going to what I would call an escape room. You're going to hor like immersive like horror, horror experiences. Yeah, yeah. Those aren't yeah. escape rooms. It's Most not like escape Sherlock's. Rooms, yeah. Sherlock's misplaced yeah. his oxygen. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, oxygen. I don't know. I think he used to inhale <laughs> oxygen while uh, he solved creams. Um, very interesting. Love it. Need it. Um, let's get to some of the questions because I can't believe we're almost practically done. -ish. Yeah. What was, um, what do we have oh. in common? You love when shows are canceled. Love when shows are canceled. I just, like, I heard you say that on Tig's podcast. Yeah, yeah. And immediately I was like, this is one of my people. Oh, you, like a live show. Like, yeah, oh, I'd always I prefer it. if it. If I, I was going to say that I, I rehearsed this in my mind. I don't often, but I was like, I mean, how great would it be if one of us canceled this? Amazing. We're loving this. <laughs> we're but loving can it. you imagine yeah. the joy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you were like, I can't. I, can't, I got COVID. On a or, Sunday? Oh, my God. I know. If I was like, May, I can't. I, you would oh be like, God, oh, I'm, I'm man. Gonna, and I'm you didn't watch. even have to be the one that canceled yeah, it. Yeah. And then. Oh, uh, well, just shoot me some dates. That's the best. A and problem getting to, for future Getting to May. be the one who's like, that's okay. Don't worry about it. You yeah. get to be cool about it. Oh, love it. I knew. I knew that. Now I just never felt compelled to be on stage every night. And once I'm there, I love it. I Like more than anything. But I would always rather be. I don't trust. Nah. I don't trust the people that go up yeah. fearlessly and constantly. Yeah. These are the people that get off after a bad set and after a good set and they seem the same. Yeah. I'm very... they're like, oh, it's the audience. I'm great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm deeply affected by what happens. Yeah. So if it's canceled, I will not be affected. Yeah. I, I can just remain. Yeah. And it's like a big adrenaline spike and then like it's good to have a break from huge, that. Yeah. Huge. Huge. Okay. Speaking of... Yeah. Walking away from stand-up Steve Martin. So you love, that is, that's Let's Get Small, right? I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that's one comedy record. Wild and Crazy Guy, and I love that. They're all great. They're all great, yeah. They're all great, except the Steve Martin brothers wasn't that I don't. Great. I don't know that one. So you, no one knows that. Yeah. One. Side A is. You know what I loved? The Martin so. Short, Steve Martin special on Netflix. I haven't seen it. It's really great. It's is it great? So, it's just like silly and charming and, um warm and you know okay we're gonna watch it yeah and it's sort of that kind of comedy that just will never age because it's just um because it's martin short yeah exactly <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> i val and i have been laughing lately that martin short's first special which i haven't seen i don't know if it exists but the title of it was i martin short goes to hollywood that's so good which is just <laughs> <laughs> he'd be on my top five people to to hang out with i've never yeah. met him but yeah yeah, yeah. I met him <clears throat> a couple times, but both times I was like, let's not ruin this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I just, you don't need to meet me. Yeah. And I have everything to lose meeting you. Not that he's a turd. I don't think he's a turd. I think I, he's a delight. Yeah. And very but I funny. I don't like, want to push it. Yeah. 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 I don't want to push it. I don't want to meet Bette Midler because she's too same. important to me. I, I mean, it's the same for you yeah. and me and Martin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't have that for Bette Midler. I'd be excited to meet Bette Midler. But just, as I'd be talking to her, I'd be like, Beaches? Like I, I wouldn't know. Okay, what it okay. Was. I would be You'd like know. encyclopedic, but I, I think I'm sure she'd be amazing. Hocus but Pocus? Hocus Pocus. What are we loving? Steel Magnolias? Hocus Pocus, Beaches. No, Beaches is her Steel Magnolias. Yes. Yeah. And then you got like Ruthless People and all these sort of crazy 80s. Is that what she, she's like David Bowie to me? I don't yeah. know why we're all 
You know what I mean? Oh, wow. I believe that some people have good reason. <laughs> yeah. But to me, it's just, let's dance. And oh, I'm like, really? Wow. We all love let's dance? Like it's... <laughs> you gotta get... I gotta get into Midler. You gotta get into Midler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a middling appreciation of Ben. <laughs> I have a t-shirt that has a picture of Bette Midler and David Bowie at a dinner party. I'm and Tom it. Waits, I think. Like, is there a waiter? <laughs> Tom <laughs> yeah. Waiter? Tom Waiter, yeah. Tom Waits, sir. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you love Betty Mids. And Steve Martin. I can relate with you on Steve Martin. So you yeah. said your parents were hippie-ish? Yeah, they were like uh, real comedy fans and um, very open about, like, very progressive about sex and sexuality and stuff. What does that mean? Like, they talked to, they never assumed that, my they didn't call it I a were, special hug. They were like, "Yeah, they were like, I put it, my penis in your mom's yes, vagina." Yeah, literally. They're like, it. it wasn't like the stork, and you yeah, know, and then yeah, my yeah. tummy gets. What if you're like, "There's a cabbage patch in the yeah. back where I fucked your mom"? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I straight up fucked her. Yeah, and it was awesome. It was awesome. She loved it. I loved it. There's no shame. No shame. A lot of nudity in the house. A lot of nudity in the yeah. house. Yeah. Can um, I ask? Was that okay? Yeah. Because I have a daughter, and I've had some. I've had some comedian friends be like, "Don't let your daughter see you naked." And I've been sort of like, but isn't that sort of a weird shit? Like, I think I, I think that's that's what we're going with. Yeah, yeah. She seems okay with it. If she, like yeah. meaning everybody's just kind of there'll be a natural I mean, like, point where it's where stops. it stops happening. But like, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about like, I'm coming out of the shower and she's coming in the bathroom. Totally. Like it's And I don't want to be like my nudity. Like yeah. I understand why maybe you would do that, but she I don't want to stigmatize came it. Came from your penis, like right? The, yeah, like, she was with me first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fifty percent of me. Yeah, I don't know. is it? Who knows? She was in a muffin that I ate. Yeah, and then she was in my chum. Yeah, <laughs> <It's Borat>. yeah. <laughs> what am I quoting Borat? <laughs> and she was in mom, and now she's here. Very crazy. Isn't that wild? So you you would see your parents naked a lot. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were. They were just. I think I sort of exaggerated. How, what hippies they were, but yeah, they were definitely for money. super. Oh, yeah, <laughs> to make it in the biz. Yeah, yeah, you know, you gotta say your parents were hippies. <laughs> Tale as old as time. Yeah, <laughs> Martin Short, my parents are hippies. Yeah, May Martin, my parents are hippies. Like my dad was in a band uh, in the seventies called Johnny Eagle and the Evil Smelling Stink Show, and he was Johnny Eagle. And uh, what is so this? they were just weirdos, you know? They were cool and they loved like my my and the Evil Smelling Stink Show. Yeah, it was like a sort of. I guess this is around Python era, and yes. you know what I mean. It so it was funny. Yeah, they were, he, he's he's hilarious. I mean, that hilarious. would work now. I think Eddie so. Eddie Eagle, Johnny Eagle, and Johnny the Eagle, evil smelling me. stink show. And we had this framed photograph of him in like a sequin jacket over his shoulder, like being Johnny Eagle. Get out of here, yeah. your dad. <laughs> yeah. Can I just say, nudity philosophies will vary, but silliness, especially dad. Yeah. For me, moms all for it. But dads can be like, they're they're like, can be hulking. Yeah, it's they're the big, a good way to connect, I think, if yes. they struggle to connect in other ways. Is to be, yeah, yeah. And it's also this, I, I was thinking about this like anthropologically, and I know we're getting into kind of like gender normative talk, but men are often bigger. So when on a date, what is the, what virtue yeah. is a man often in a classic ham and cheese sandwich yeah. date? <laughs> the guy is trying to show that he has a sense of humor. Meaning like, isn't that like a way of saying like, I'm I safe, have a lot of like testosterone, that. but I'm safe. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, maybe, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I put it to you. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to follow my dad on Instagram because he just got on Instagram and he's started uh, at this stage in his life becoming a puppet maker. He started making Can puppets. I get your dad on this show? Yes. What is happening? He's the best. It's, he's a puppet maker? He started making these bizarre uh, sort of haunting puppets out of and he cuts off his own hair and he glues it to them of course he does yeah and it's it, japanese folk horror yeah yeah it's very if they came alive we'd all be fucked it's yeah you gotta you gotta follow him i will at, at the james chato c-h-a-t-t-o c-h-a-t-t-o yeah and you see his puppets e he also does pizza-based pun work where he's photoshopping the pizza-based pun world yeah what does that yeah, mean yeah. like he'll photoshop an image from well, like Lord of the Rings, uh, sour, like pie of Sauron. You know what I mean? Like, and he'll Photoshop pie like a pizza Sauron. pie. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Now I just yeah. want to find another one. Gandalf the Grey, uh, Legolas, Lega. I can't do he it. He does sort of obscure. Oh, Life of Pi. He did. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck. 
All right, well, I'll, I'll come up with a brilliant one later. Yeah. You don't always have to win, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to myself out loud. Okay, so you had these groovy naked parents, and they loved comedy, and they did they teach you, introduce you to Stevie Martz? Yeah, Stevie Martz. Did you have a, a special tie to him because your last name is Martin? Were you like... Thanks, so. I mean, you had to have. <laughs> yeah. I would have claimed Probably. That. When you're 10, you're yes. like, wait, what? You're like... I think I'm Harry Potter and this is What if I met cat. him and I was like, Martin, Mar like. <laughs> um, and Martin Short. And Martin Short. <gasps> <gasps> um, <laughs> you just crossed your eyes. <sighs> but then also kids in the hall was, they, they my mom also took silly me. Also Yes, yeah, so silly. And, and my mom took me to see them. Um, I guess it would have been like a reunion tour in the late 90s. And they were like rock stars in Canada. And of people course. were And they were all in drag. And it was just like I was so say, sexy. Weren't they like cool. very so queer, sexually like, queer progressive? Yeah. Like, right. Imagine it was like the early 90s and they're yeah. like making yeah. out. I, yeah. Yeah. Only one of them's gay, but they it was awesome. I, I think, yeah, I'm trying to remember that they would do a lot of like sexual sketches, a lot of, there was a sketch where like uh, one, they're in a sauna, but one of the guys just has breasts. Right. I remember that, like, just like always, like playing with, like, what are we or dealing like with they here? They would, they they would play female characters, but not in like a Monty Python like right. way. Like they just play really great female characters that were like really sexy and like, <laughs> like they, yeah, it just it blew my mind as like a twelve yes. year old. Yeah, yes, and they're so they're so funny. So yeah. that was shaping you, and your parents appreciated comedy. Yeah, I, I like to obviously unpack where my parents might have, like I called them Greek gods that were fighting. Yeah. But I'll also say they put out the comics for me and they took yeah. me to see Bill Cosby, Crisis. But they did? Uh, noted. That's nice. That, yeah. yeah, and it really changed yeah. my life. Yeah, yeah. I was probably like nine. Yeah. Just young enough to be like, my dad put on a jacket to wow. watch a man tell jokes. It's crazy. And yeah, I feel grateful that I knew at a young age that that was like a viable thing you could do in the world right. that was cool well you started i, I i'm sorry i'm sorry that you talk about this <laughs> i was starting to say sure you talk about this and i'm sorry so i'm sorry that you talk about this all the time but you started when you were 13 yeah at second city i started taking improv classes and then doing shows soon after that i don't this must have been like just the wild west before anyone cared about having like children and yeah clubs there's some weird and, like, girl yeah like in my school uniform like smoking yes. Yes. in the club like i'd go on yes. stage smoking yes like it was so surreal yes. yeah but and then really quickly it was like yeah three or four nights a week i was doing it and then, really yeah. and then i dropped okay. out of school when i was 15 say what i dropped out of school to do it but, you yeah, did when i was 15 you're, i say this with full respect you're like a carney you're like yeah. a born died in the wool like i'm yeah. a performer <laughs> i don't need history i'm out of here i don't know why though because like i said like i love when shows are canceled i, I wasn't like that then though i'm, I'm pretty Same. introverted like i don't know what i'm introverted too yeah but there was I, I again I, I can't say what it was for you but i felt like there I, I felt like a rocket on a launching pad yeah and there was a real desire and it wasn't, again, my home life wasn't that horrible. Yeah. But I, it wasn't horrible at all. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> but there was like a, there was a, a beacon calling to me. And I was like, I, I know I have to make myself uncomfortable and yeah. go into Boston. I, I was doing shows when I was, you know, 17, 18 were some of my earlier shows. Yeah. And just hooked and, and I was yeah. like, this is it. I got to do this. I didn't really start properly until I was 22, but like I got the hook in me. But the, it, you know, it was a, it was a, I want to be comfortable, but I knew my true comfort would come when I yeah, picked up the sword and went into the woods. Yeah, like I knew yeah. I had to do it. So you had that too. Yeah. You had to let your beast boy out. Your, I had to, yeah, Iron John. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I got on his Iron shoulders John. and let him hire. And, and that's what stand-up comedy was because yeah, it was like same. all these wild pirates, like yeah. weird pirates. Not all of them were great. Yeah. And a oh lot of them, God. not just saying this, a lot of them were on cocaine. Like yes. a lot of the people were like, look, I'm already an alcoholic. I'm already a drug addict. Yeah. And this seems to be something you can do with that lifestyle. Same. But you would meet like I remember seeing Gary Goldman when I was that age and I was like, oh my God, so there's yeah. a way to do this. And Ellen was a, one of those yeah. people. And Ray Roma Romano was one of those people in Seinfeld. And to be like celebrated for being weird and different and That's instead, it. Of, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, oh, it was the coolest club to be part of. Like, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Completely. No, you saw, you're very intuitive. You saw me waiting to say something. Well, go on. Oh, no, I got, yeah, I got, yeah. Just <laughs> you got like, nothing. Not really, but yeah. Yeah, I loved it. Okay, so I heard you say a couple things on Tig's podcast 
and I was going to um, throw them back in your face and embarrass Great. you. Great. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. But I, you d- <laughs> I remember you said that you were basically doing a Bill Hicks impression. Oh, as a teenager? Yes. Yeah, for a while. And I, one thing, I, it's actually not throw back in your face. You were like, she said, which was an interesting question. She was like, what advice would you give yourself? And you were like, well, don't do impressions of other comedians. And I was like, we all do that. I just yeah. wanted to alleviate oh, that. Oh, that's nice to hear. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wanted to be like, it's right? what you like, do for the first 10 years. You, yeah, you're just... You're just- Doing I'm an doing Brian Regan. I'm doing yeah. Seinfeld. I'm doing all these guys. So I wanted you and to in feel life, safe too. Like you're just trying on different personalities. As if there's an original choice. There's seven billion of us. You yeah. know what I mean? There's yeah, going to be yeah. a few repeats. Yeah. There's a great Bill Burr bit where he goes, "We already have that guy." That's you see good. a guy in the street. You go, "We already got that one." Like that's, that's really a repeat. Good. Yeah. So I was curious. You're 13. You're smoking in your school uniform, yeah. and you're doing a Bill Hicks. <laughs> For those who don't know, Bill Hicks is very like. Uh, political and like and uh, <laughs> aggressive, you know. Yeah. He's like attacking the status quo. What were you? Do you remember any of your bits when you started? I mean, I think I was doing a Bill Hicks impersonation off stage mainly, like in in the club, like as if. But also, being a tough tough guy. I, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I definitely remember talking about the apocalypse a lot and being uh, on stage, like. <laughs> I remember doing a show with... I would have loved to see your little <laughs> set list. Apocalypse, Apocalypse. question mark? <laughs> <laughs> End of days. Yeah, and I talked about school, I guess, and I remember being booed. It was like... What? Because it was a New Year's Eve show, and I just had... I, I rightfully booed. Like, I, I uh, people had paid for their tickets. They were all dressed up, and I was just probably high and had a cigarette. You're not... You weren't supposed to really smoke on stage. Yes. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, I was just an asshole. And people were like, boo. <laughs> Absolutely boo. Really? And, um, rightfully booed is your uh, yeah, second book. Like rightfully, rightfully booed. booed, yeah. Because you were really, you were just skating too close to the edge. I don't know why I was so angry. It's like, I, I just, it, it was I just ask? a moment of like, it hadn't dawned on me that, oh yeah, I'm, this is actually for them. <laughs> not All for I'm hearing is you figured out in front of people what every child needs to figure out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. it was a normal thing. Like you realize at a certain point that not everyone is taken with every little thing you do yeah. and yeah, that there's yeah. a certain amount of responsibility oh and God. preparation required. Aren't you glad that like YouTube wasn't like that there's no record of you a lot of this? You br- just a thought right out of my brain. I think about this all oh the time. Oh my God. I'd, I'd, we'd be ruined. Like we'd the be ruined. things I said, like the yeah. terrible comedy. Oh my God. I, uh... I kind of wish I could see. I wish I, I would post it now. Yeah. Because I'd like to. Not that I'm like the sterling example of how great a comedian can be. Although in my own taste, I, I am. I like my own comedy. <laughs> yeah. But when I when I was starting, it was like I remember I had a joke about. I'm just gonna say it. you'll hear the Seinfeld. Yeah. I go food court. <laughs> what is this? Where rebel foods go on trial? <laughs> Here's the tag. You're gonna fry for what you did, chicken. That's good. No, it's not. You're kind. Good. You're I kind. Like Do you have a video of that somewhere? I wish. That's literally before. Like, if you filmed your set back then, you had like a Sylvania VH. Yeah. Like, nobody had that. There's a video on YouTube of me in like, it was like a televised competition. And I did a character and it it, it was 2003, but it looks like it's from 1980. It's like grainy Canadian yes, television. Yes. Like, it really... It makes it looks like it's so old, but it's. Yeah. I thought you were about to be like, and it doesn't age well. <laughs> <laughs> the character is Qu- let's, let's just, just say, say not white yeah. and very uh, very offensive. Um, uh, let me see. Let me see. I had something, and then I got I got so caught in don't make that riff offensive, <laughs> <laughs> and I got stuck. Um, what were we? There we was were talking about you was going on, on stage and, and Bill Hicks and your bits. And the apocalypse, and you got booed. When, when did like sub? Because I'm interested in helping people, and mm. and sobriety is something we talk a lot about. Yeah, we don't have time to go into the whole story, but you started at what age were you doing uh, American cocaine? Mm. Is that something you don't want to share? You don't have to share that. No, no. I, oh. I, I mean, I, I think it like right at puberty. I, I kind of like 13. I started oh, wow. not coke, but like just smoking weed all the time and cigarettes and just like anything I could get my hands on and then and then probably uh 15 I, I started dating like a 27 year old comic oh, wow. uh who uh did a lot of coke and okay. then uh when that ended I was like 
well, I missed the coke. And then I found the coke elsewhere. And But none of my friends. Oh, when that ended, you were like, boy, I miss coke. Yeah. You are like, <laughs> you thought you missed the person, but you were like, it was turns the, out it was the cocaine. hundred percent. It was the survivor yeah. cocaine. Yeah. Can I ask a, this is helping me because I'm realizing that I have a bias towards people that are addicts and that mm. end up doing drugs. Because I was going to be like, but your parents seem so loving. But clearly that's not how it works. Like, was there, a, and I'm assuming you've done some work on this, was there a deficit, like an internal deficit? Was was there something you were trying to fix with these things? Or was it really as simple as I dated a Coke dealer and I wanted to have fun? <laughs> yeah. No, it definitely was never about having fun. Like, yeah. it was never fun. You know what I mean? Really? Yes. Yeah. Like. In fact, yeah. don't get me started. I, we watch the way that drugs and alcohol are portrayed in movies and TV. I'm like, that's not it. Yeah. It's either one or the other. It's either leaving Las Vegas or it's like, yeah, we're finally on spring break and we get to just yeah. live it up. And I'm like, it's. I it's definitely kinda, had some great times, but yeah. then it very quickly becomes just like a horrible shame cycle. And yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work long term. Yeah, yeah. we're definitely not. The, yeah. I know what I'm hearing there is is somebody in my family quit drinking and and what they did was they they labeled it evil which again it's using an addictive type brain yeah. to quit an addiction yeah. and the addictive brain is black and white that's yeah. why I like I believe it's in the program it's good until it's not or it yeah. works until it stops yeah and th I I appreciate the subtlety that you're giving it going like when I look at my time drinking yeah there were these incredible drunks that I had. Yeah. I remember getting very drunk by myself, often by myself, yeah. uh, watching Clay Aiken win uh, American <laughs> Idol or win You're the episode. You euphoric. Episodes. Yeah, I, I was in euphoria. <laughs> really? I, I was sitting there going like, <laughs> I wish I had video of it because I was only like 23. Yeah. And I'm sitting in my kitchen in Chicago watching him on a laptop and I'm just like, you get him, Clay. Because <laughs> oh like, he was God. such a, like an underdog. He really was. And I was like full of salsa tequila and just being like, <laughs> you get him. And then my my first wife comes home and I'm like pretending to not be drunk. I'm sure it was all that. I haven't thought about Clay yeah. in a long time. I think about him every day. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, listen, Clay every day. Driving back from your gig. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's how I, that's my threshold. I bet he has a podcast. He must. Can I just say everyone does? He must. Every previous contestant we of American We were just talking Idol. about this. Yeah. yeah. I, I was seeing, sometimes I get the press breaks on who's making the rounds and, and this is no disrespect, but I saw Mini Driver is promoting something and I was like, oh, I wonder if Mini Driver's good at podcasts. Mini Driver has a podcast. Are you serious? Mini questions. Mini questions? She has seven mini questions to her guests. I'm like, <sighs> This is a thing, man. Like actors yeah. have figured out that it's a great thing to do in between jobs. Yeah. But as a, you know, I feel like the There's first some, kid that did ham radio. I don't every actor. I want to have some heroes who are enigmatic to me. Like I don't need yeah, to know. Yeah, the lore. Yeah. The mystery. Imagine if Marilyn Monroe had Twitter. Like it, it, she wouldn't have any of the lore. So I'm in the Village Lantern, which is a club in the West Village. And I forget who it was and I, if I could remember it. But it was an open mic. Yeah. And they were just kind of speaking from their heart, it seemed. And they were like, all this shit we have to do as comedians. Can you imagine getting an, a Facebook invite that said Richard Pryor invites you to <laughs> this open mic show? Like, like yeah. the, you're talking about YouTube, but even like the, the growing pains of like yeah. Richard Pryor or George Carlin had to get three friends to come to the show yeah. so he could try it <laughs> yeah, yeah. at a steakhouse. Do you I'm think like, that happened? It didn't. Right, yeah. But it was we it was weirder and worse. It's like they went up in between burlesque acts. Right, right. In right. like a weird like vaudeville, truck stop like, in yeah, Jersey. Yeah. Or so ben they had their own version. Bathhouses. Exactly. Gay, gay bathhouse. Yeah. A bathhouse. Yeah. At least nobody saw it. Yeah. Which is the motto of the bathhouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for visiting. At least nobody saw it. Yeah. Like that was the eighties or in the seventies. <laughs> but um, okay, yes. You I was wondering what, was the what you were what you were trying to I think Here's a, you, we can also open up the question. What have you learned about sobriety and, and, and about mm. what you were after and, and how have you addressed the cause? The effect was the mm. drinking or the drugs. How have you kind of honed in on the cause of that effect? It's an ongoing thing, but I think probably in my teens, some of it was like gender stuff and, and, uh, just feeling weird in my body, and of then I'm course. sure stuff at home. And well, that's a good, we were talking about cognitive dissonance. Cognitive you have dissonance. like a physical dissonance. Oh, yeah, a massive disparity between how I feel and 
how I'm perceived. Like, and no way to talk about it. I mean, no, now back into there then, is. Yeah. Oh, my God. No language around it. Right. Like, I only recently, like, I'm 35. I, like, just got top surgery a year ago. Like, what? Yeah. You know what I mean? Of uh, course. So, that, so that, that's an improvement, but it's still not even, it's still not great. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, yeah, yeah. it's it in the 90s. Yeah. So then. The 90s was, like, Girl bands and boy bands, like it was You're very, right. yeah. It was that like, was its own kind of fifties. It was yeah, a it was. It was like we slipped backwards because the seventies very androgynous, very yes, cool. But that's right. Um, yeah, so that, and then probably, yeah, I'm sure stuff at home, and uh, and then wanting to be cool, and this all these older friends, and um, and then I think once I had like a sort of bat damaging relationship with some older person, then you're like, then you're really sad after that. So then it's like a was this yeah. the older person that you dated? Yeah. Were they male? Do you mind? Yeah, it was a guy. It was a guy. Of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you no, mean, just, of course you don't mind me asking? No, I mean, of course it was a guy. Oh, it was a guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Um, um, and that relationship kind of was an early wound, would you say? Uh, yeah, I think it, it definitely was like a loss of innocence. Like, your yeah. ball. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was my ball. It was your ball. Yeah. But then, yeah, now how do I... I, now I, I recognize like if whenever I'm feeling down or bad about myself, I notice little things creeping back. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm watching a weird amount of porn. Like, or you know what I mean? Or like, oh, I'm smoking a lot or I'm whatever it is. Like All, all those behaviors are the countries. They're all the same. Yeah, they're the countries. Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. countries. Or stand-up comedy to a certain extent. Yeah. I, I don't mean with you. It, it's clearly not with you, but like some people will Well, definitely that. work though, like being a workaholic, but I just try to be vigilant and... Man, we're recording a podcast on a Sunday. Yeah. I hear you. You hear me? <laughs> you yeah, yeah. I mean? You, like, you got to get to Ojai, man. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm banking these because I'm about to go and film something, which is great, but yeah. what is it? And for all the spiritual growth that I've endeavored, let's yeah. say, I, I I can tell you from my experience that there have been major changes in me. Yeah, same. There's, yeah. Still, there's still like a fundamental dog chasing something I in know. there. But then what happens if that goes away? Do we? Do you just like shrivel up? I don't know. Like you need a bit of that. Maybe, I agree. But... I agree. It's it's super helpful. Yeah. If if you can have a compulsive attitude towards work, the West will never call you on it. Yeah. No yeah. one will ever say like, take it easy. No. And I'm not trying to be funny, but Kevin Hart, Tiffany Haddish, these are like icons of, of stand-up that, that are constantly working. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Constantly. And because we don't really have that value that goes like, what about Vigo Mortensen or, yeah. or these these types that appear I, to say I, no to a lot? I, got, I was I I hadn't never met Zach Galifianakis and I met him he, at Largo. And that's I, another one. Oh man, so impressed by that. Like, that's a that's a hero of mine. Totally, me too. Like moving yeah. out to Vancouver Island exactly. and just I, I always fantasize about this t- hypothetical does it. time where I'll have four months to just go to a cottage and but it just never comes. But I, I, I'm gonna make it happen. May. Let's make it happen. I feel, I don't know, I'm feeling a lot of friendship here. Yeah, me too. I'm feeling a lot of kin- <laughs> I'm really glad. kinship. Yeah. I was very excited to have you on, but like nobody's talking about that topic. Yeah. And Zach, so I met Zach when I was like 20, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. But I was young and I was very hungry. Yes. And two Zach stories. One was uh, there was a great show. It doesn't. It was called Whiplash. And I was like, I'm going to put out a record and I'm going to record four Whiplash shows because the set there was 15 minutes. So I'm just going to record four and marry them together and have an hour and have the perfect album. And Zach just goes, maybe don't work so hard. (laughs) <laughs> and I was I it, like he might as well have said like or you could eat a baby. I'm yeah. like like it didn't make any You're sense. Like, what? I was like yeah. what? And then later another Zach story. I was also 20s, maybe early 30s. I was like um, talking to him about he had he had a farm in North Carolina. He maybe did? he still does. I, I I believe. So this is he's always been like he's this. always been this okay, way. Okay, cool. And I go like. But what about like I said something like and I used to believe this. Mm. I was like I gotta know there's a spot somewhere. Yeah. And he was like, yeah. I was like, that's life to me, like spots and, yeah. and getting in the mix. Yeah, I hate, yeah. I hate this, but that's how I felt. And he was like, yeah, and sometimes life is reading a book in a hammock under an apple tree. Yeah. And he might as well have said, have you considered the communist party? Yeah. <laughs> like I just like didn't I understand. And now you're this way, I'm this way. I told you, I, we moved up to Hawaii. Yeah. We're going for it. Are and you it's really? Doable. That's great. Like, it's, and it's because of people 
like Zach. And yeah. ve- that list is very short. Yeah. Very, it, very short of people that are prioritizing that balance. Prioritizing Go. life. And then that, and then I bet their comedy will be great forever because they're, they have stuff to write about and talk about and they're reading stuff. And, Speed agree. Yeah, totally. Because why do so many comedians have bits about the airport is because all we're doing is traveling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like Zach is going to, yeah. Yeah. You, you just made me realize that he, that having him as an example has, has changed my life for sure. Yeah. I got to read more. <laughs> and go under apple trees more. Yeah, get me under an apple tree. I was going to say, talking about compulsive behavior, talking about balance, because we're, what time is it, Katie? Shit. There's no way we're going to be able to cover this in a satisfactory way, but we're going to try. We'll try. <laughs> we'll do our damnedest. Um, burp. Burp off mic. Mm. One of the tenets of almost every spiritual practice, whether it be Buddhism, Hinduism, mystical Christianity, Judaism, all of them, are trying to retrain the human experience to lean on a, um, you could say, a higher power or some more consistent Mm. available love. Um, And I don't mean love in like, I love your work. I just mean Mm. like a a bigger (laughs) yes. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Imagine if I meant that. Yeah. Um, I believe it was Dante. It was. I believe it was Dante who said God is the love that hung the stars. So it's this this thing that's like orchestrating and and maintaining and the the paper everything's written on. I guess you could say. Mm. So one of the things, as someone who, who's uh, str- struggled with addiction and also is in show business, um, I'm constantly going back to this idea that these, uh, these other people have discovered um, the wellspring inside of them, right? Yeah. This idea that there's there's a beginning of life and it's looking out their eyes. That's, yeah. that's my fascination. There's this quote about God is, a, God is a being who's only aware of his own existence through us. Like yeah, he, like we're, that. yeah and, and that there's, yeah, we all have this still eternal core within us Deep, deep down. Yeah. Right. That we have to tap into. And tapping into it yeah. is to end the endless hedonic treadmill yeah. of I'm only as happy as the last thing I booked or the last set I did or yeah. the last line that I did or the last drink that I had. All of these things don't work. And I think it's built into this classroom. Those things don't work. That is the lesson. Mm. It's to leave us unsatisfied and go like, well, what does work? Mm. Even like... You know, friendships, relationships, they're not going to take you all the way. No. So looking for the thing that does take you all the way, that transcends. It's, it feels like such a losing battle because the whole culture is designed to make us anxious and wanting and yes. and feeling inadequate. And it's just all money. And it, it's just, yeah. I completely yeah. agree. It's, you have to fight against so much to, I completely yeah. agree. But kids are magical, being around kids, dogs. Yeah, you know Those, they they these, know what's going on. They're I like, completely yeah. agree. Yeah, and they take you out of yourself. Yeah, and that and that having a, a baby has been hugely helpful. So I, I guess that the reason I said that was just to take us into the. We only have a couple minutes here. Unfortunately, I have to go. Um, but the God stuff. When I saw you do stand up, two, you told me to take Reversitrol, bitter melon, and what was the third one? <laughs> I do. I take it. Reversitrol, bitter melon, wait, and uh, N- NAC or something. NA. NAC or something. It was. It's some like amino acid builder. I, the, I'm like, gonna look it up. But you did an Amazon show, like a show for the executives at Amazon or something. I just ended up sitting next to an Amazon executive at a dinner after doing an Amazon thing, and and he was like saying he went to Jeff Bezos's island, <laughs> and that there were these three supplements that you have to take for immortality. Yes, and um, bitter melon. It was a really compelling argument, and it was yeah, bitter. <laughs> I have. I take all of them. I think of you every day. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I take them too, and and I'm taking Jennifer Aniston's collagen because I just trust her. What is that? What is collagen? <laughs> this is collagen powder, and you mix it into drinks and stuff. And I just what does it do? Believe her. It, um, youth and uh, just youth, youth and like arthritis. Like, a, like oh, really? It, it helps with joints and sort of. Okay. You know, I, I mean, I got a smoothie with. 30,000 things in it anyway. I'll throw, I'll throw some Jennifer Aniston yeah, in there. Yeah. I'm looking it up so people don't go crazy. Because if I was listening to this podcast, I would be going crazy to Look know what NAC. the third one is. I tried NAC. I, I'm in my order history right now. It's really insane what I've ordered. Oh, okay. it's... I'm... I'm that's a, the thing. I'm capitalism's wet dream because I'm just constantly on Amazon. NAC. Oh, uh, I think this might be it. 
if it says buy it again, N acetyl cysteine amino acid supplement. Is that it? Maybe. Maybe. But it would show up. It would say buy again. Hmm. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> Is it NACL? Fucking shit. Or NR. A? No. NRA. No. Join the NRA. Yeah, join the NRA. Yeah. I know no, you've I been wanting to say that this I've whole been time. Trying to find a way to get that in that message across. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't remember. Buy it again. Seymour. We're gonna find this. Okay, so tell me about your current belief system. Because the other thing I was gonna say when I mm. saw you, you were it's called M N M N. N M N. N M N Pro three hundred. Yes, I need to and get some more. And it repairs your DNA or something. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Who fucking knows? Who fucking knows? But Bezos, I mean, that dude, I love how the rich are just desperately to, trying to go to like, live forever. I've won. Yeah. And rich comedians too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see the rich comedian. You can tell how how well, how how much a comedian makes to do a theater based on their abs. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> when they're all soft and gelatinous, you're like, yeah, he's doing okay. When they start getting hairy and ripped. Yeah. It's a lot of bread. They, they I don't know that I want to live forever. It. No, you don't. My mom wants to be cryogenically frozen. Really? She's looking into it. Well, yeah. her and Ted Williams? <laughs> Just to, well, who's Ted Williams? He's a baseball player. His head is frozen. Oh, somewhere. really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I said, why? And she went, what could be better than being? I was like, wow. Well, according to, okay, <laughs> consider the source, but according to <laughs> a lot of religions that they're more mature levels. Yeah. Um, your mom has no choice. There, life has no opposite. The opposite of death is birth. Life is, and all oh, real life is eternal. I love that. Yeah, I there love you go. that. You know, that's Eckhart Tolle. Just that's nice. my source. But meaning, I used to have a joke about this. I was like, people that think that death is nothingness, mm. uh, I'm like, Buddhists would call that wishful thinking. You don't just get to leave yeah. the wheel of You're stuck life in, and death. Is it samsara? Though? Yeah, you like, do yeah, it over yeah, and yeah. over. Uh, until you earn the void, but even the void isn't a void. It, yeah. It's it's, it's uh, the the nothingness, like the no thingness of allness, if that makes sense. Love so it. So your mom will be fine. Isn't that great? But also, anyone who's had a near death experience or died and come back describes the same thing, which is like this sort of sense of a benevolent yes. force and, and the feeling of oneness. And, and the home. Yeah. Home. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hopefully like a, it'll be all right. I, well, it's funny. <laughs> You ask all of the sages, is there anything to worry about? Yeah. They would all say no. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's In my nice. opinion. That's really nice. You ask the neurotic, narcissistic, megalomaniac, yeah. tribal There's leaders a hell. There's of these a, people. Yeah. yeah. Because, again, they're taking duality to non-duality. They're taking yeah. this split reality into oneness, and it just doesn't translate. So yeah. they... They instead yank God and make it like us, stuck in if I win, you must lose. So if we yeah. go to heaven, someone must go to hell. Like mm. it's it's we have to transcend the limitations of our reality the to understand. Of yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it sounds like uh, I'm glad that we. I guess in talking about this, you're talking about it because it seems like you're on this page. Yes. Uh, what I was trying to say was that when I saw you at Largo, you were talking. You had a great bit about the witness about how. Who? What? What am I? And, oh, yeah. and when you were in the lockdown, you were losing your identity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was very spiritual for me as well. Yeah. Why don't we close uh, with whatever thoughts you have on on being or Be, on being or, or, or soul? And I'm I'm still here. I'm not putting you on the spot. I'm, I've just been talking so much. I guess I think um, I, I I do believe in the illusion of separateness and and ego and meaning that separateness is an illusion. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like we're all just one giant like writhing organism like yeah. you know what I mean the, yeah, and sure. and uh I I went when I was like 20 I went um to Nepal to volunteer I was trying to get clean and I I went there my parents paid for the flight it was great and then I went up in the mountains and I was like thinking about how mountains are tectonic plates going push like that's crazy they're pushed just, up against each other yeah, yeah. And that you can find like stuff at the top of Everest from like the bottom of the ocean and the crazy stuff. But wow. I was like, that's the same force, you know, that made me. And that's right. I don't know. Yeah. That's right. But I don't and practice you're the any of this stuff. The confluence of other things. Totally. Yeah. You're, like, and take friction. with veganism. Yeah, but you're only 30, blah. Five, yeah. 
Don't rush it. I want to. I want to be <laughs> meditating. I, actually, Tig and, and Stephanie are doing like transcendental meditation. I want to get into all that, but I also kind of love the the hedonistic world of attachment and shiny things and stuff. Like I, yeah. I, I can't. You know, I I love that too. So. Well, you have to be somebody before you can be nobody. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a that's a Ram Dass thing. You can't rush to the end of the line. In fact, he would say that a lot of the bad trips and sort of the existential crisis of the '60s was that a lot of people were taking these mind expanding hallucin- hallucinogenics, yeah. but they had no basis for them. So mm. it's almost like you have to trust the do the, the work. It's like yeah. you're on this thing. Did this you know phase. all those cult leaders were? Please. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know why that was such a dad thing. Like that a big sneeze? well, dads just do big sneezes always. I yeah, know. and I blow my nose like I'm honking. Do you? Walker. Yeah, it's so loud. Um, I didn't know hilarious. that all like Marilyn Man, uh, Manson, Marilyn, Marilyn Charles, Manson, Charles Manson, and and all those guys did uh, LSD experiment. Like were part of government LSD I experiments. I know. And so did Whitey Bulger. They gave him LSD 50 times. He's the mobster from Boston. Huh. There's, yeah. I like, mean, so if you're not ready for it and you are a narcissist and you, then you could really. Well, absolutely. That's another Ram Dass thing is if you try to bring your ego, meaning Mae Martin, with you into the realization of oneness, you'll have a, a, a psychic break. Mm. Like that's the definition of paranoia. That's interesting. But if you surrender all of it yeah. and go, you need to get. But our whole job is about me, me, me. No, I agree. Yeah, it's so but hard. But keep doing it. Yeah. I, I actually, I'm surprised there aren't more, I don't need to tell you what to do. I'm just saying like, I'm encouraging you to do what you're already doing. And that, um, it's a Richard Rohr quote, we don't come to God or truth by doing it right. We come to God by doing it wrong. Yeah. Um, so it, this idea of like the further, it's the hound of heaven. It's like truth wants to be discovered. It, it, it and Wanna, there's so much I'm okay I'm gonna read the William Blake story I'm googling Hound of Heaven I look into that it's a whatever. poem I, I, what if it's William Blake I forget who wrote the Hound of Heaven I would read you know there's one book that I recommend to anybody which is It's the Power of Now it's the Eckhart Tolle book mm. it's a great audio book too I've never read it yeah and it's a classic right it is yeah. a classic and it's very simple and there's not a lot of like theology or anything yeah but like you'll you'll get with it but it has a lot of what you were talking about in your bed it's like who am I? Yeah. Spirituality is, is the study of what doesn't change. So when you were eight or 13, smoking yeah. a cigarette on stage, what was what part mm. didn't change? When you meet, you know, when I interviewed Norman Lear and he's in his 90s, like what part of Norman is wow. the same as yeah. when he was nine? It's his awareness. And that's, that's yeah. the part your mom can't drop. Your mom will go. Ted Williams will go. It doesn't matter f- where we dethaw these people. Yeah. They'll go eventually. It doesn't matter if we take the bitter melon supplement. You'll yeah. go eventually. And, you know, but where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it would be nice. I don't if- mean heaven or hell. I mean, like, where could you go? Yeah. Yeah. And where there's do you only go? being and there's only now. Yeah. So relax. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if you got to go wherever you believed existed, you know. Like, yeah, like you're shaping it. Yeah. So if we're building reality with our intention or something, then yeah. who's to say we're not also building our. Well, Deepak Chopra said that when he yeah. did his podcast. He goes, I believe you get what you expect. Cool. Like, so if you're like terrified of hell, maybe you go there. But no, wouldn't, wouldn't there be part <laughs> of you that would be like, it's finally happening? Would there be like this weird, perverse relief that you're like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, maybe, like, yeah, yeah. And would it be forever? I don't know. Or would you just learn that weird lesson? I, I, uh, I'm more in the camp of like where we come from is where we're is, headed is yeah and it's and it's benevolent and yes. it's actually my god is so loving it's offensive Mm-mm. meaning it's so it's not just forgiving it's merciful mm. and it's not it it's not judging or weighing we we wish it would yeah. it's actually there's a great Father Greg Boyle line where it's like, I, God doesn't even have a plan for you. He's too busy delighting in you mm-hmm. to have a plan. That's Your nice. parents have a plan. Your doctor has a plan. Your therapist has a plan. God doesn't have a plan. But we want a God to have a plan to find us yeah. parking spots and stuff. So I'm saying this is this love is so abstract and, and otherworldly that it's not even, would prefer one that squashes our enemies That's and helps cool. us, you know? That's cool that you. it feels like an, like a, an actual love, not just like a neutrality, a sort of neutral infinite. Yeah. It's, well, okay. Because I sometimes feel that it's the latter, like neutrality. Yeah, like that nature is. You know, we ascribe these moral things to it, but it's actually just it is. You know. 
Okay, but I don't with you. Yeah. But nature is extreme duality. Two trees, look at their roots. They're fighting for survival. It's extreme. It's kill or be killed. The yeah. whole thing. We attribute beauty to the sun setting and all these things. And that's yeah, great. I'm that's not trying amazing. to take that away. Mm. But really, it's it's all separation. And God is beyond that separation. It's beyond mm. this strange dream we're having. Yeah, and and then God <laughs> is not separate to us. Like it's That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's the animating principle of, huh. of you. I wasn't expecting this yeah. today. <laughs> but I, I put some drugs in your Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In your magic I'm tripping balls. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're both tripping. Well, you can start kind of tripping in a good way. But yeah. it's always you can have these conversations if you remember the anchor of like you're okay, it's okay. Yeah. Like where could you go that isn't home because mm. when you start panicking you just have to roll with it here's a question i had for joe latrulio oh, i'm just yeah, kidding yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i wish we had more time i just i have to get the car back yeah i'm a little bit late uh but i have to get the car back to val this was awesome this was so fun i feel like we could do nine more hours because you have so much interesting stuff uh, we in could do life. nine more hours yeah let's talk we'll do it another time yeah please. this was awesome thanks for having me man. thank you may thank you um we do have to ask do you know the time you laughed the hardest in your life can you think of it oh. You know what? And it's drug related, but Please. I know exactly when. Tell me. It was, I was 14. I was with my best friend, Nicole. My parents had I gone out Nicole. for maybe you have it. <laughs> I, I always, <laughs> Nicole, you're in Nicole. Yeah. And they'd only gone out for like four hours, my parents, but we had a joint and we had mead, like that honey. Mead, mead. honey liquor. Yeah. Like, which I think was in my house. I don't know why we had that. Because your dad's a centurion. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and he won a yeah, battle. Yeah. <laughs> so they gave him a horn filled with mead. Yeah. yeah which I'd been like coveting. <laughs> and then we, um, we don't drank the mead, mead and we smoked the joint and it probably just came from our brains, but we were just like beyond hysterical. We were, and so I, nothing triggered it, but we started laughing so hard that I thought I was going to die. Like I, we were, it was real fear of like, what happens if we can never stop? Like tears pouring, like red crawling along the ground. Like we were trying to get back inside. And I think it was triggered because we realized my neighbor had been on his porch and listening the whole time or something. Oh my but God. But it was like looking at each other with real fear of like, what if we can never stop laughing? And like, aching like pain and the neighbor watching uh, yeah this is mythic and then getting back inside and just crawling through my head yeah it was great like the wolf of wall street when he's trying to get in the house yeah all you know, of the best stories and this is one of them it, there have to be the super ego there has to be the the neighbor on their porch yeah 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 because otherwise you're just laughing but you're like this guy's gonna think we're nuts every time i like make a wish in a fountain or blow out candles or something i wish to have like to laugh the way I did when I was 14 like to, wow. to have those like laugh attacks that hurt because yeah. it's so hard to get now no I know you, you get the right people around you you can get there but like yep. that hysteria of yep. like what is the world who yep. are we what's yep. happening yep. like yeah well I wish that for you thank you that's yeah, yeah, incredible yeah. <laughs> would you say keep it crispy it's how we close the guest just says keep it crispy keep it crispy <laughs> okay the fastest one um, thank you May Martin <laughs> thanks watch, for having me watch feel good and, and keep an eye out for this new show I and got a special else? coming out yeah uh, March 28th an hour long a stand up special on yeah, Netflix netflix.com yeah. or it's okay. a website <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank May you. Mar What's it called? Uh, SAP. SAP? SAP? I sort of regret the title, but yeah. Why? SAP. It's fine yeah. because people like me go, SAP? Yeah. What? Yeah. SAP? It's having, having to repeat it makes you go, ah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. No, I like it. Thanks. I like it. All right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you make me, you make me.